Hello, hello, sir. They're talking to me. Oh, howdy. Oh, hello. Oh, hi. Who are hi. you? Who are you? Um, oh. I am uh, True Vanguard and uh, True Vanguard from YouTube and Twitch. Yeah. Yay! Well, hello. Yay. We, oh, hi. We, he streams sometimes on the Planet Destiny channel. He's got his own <laughs> channel and everything. It's great. It's great. He's also he's also one of my clanmates that I'm that I'm you know pretty stoked. To, he's, I got another guy on the stream. You know, another Rezo bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so... Um, Rezo Bros. Nice. Rezo Bros. Like, Rezo Bros for life. But life. We're also going to have another guest come on a little bit later. I'm going to save it as... Well, it's already been like spoiled on Twitter. Yes. We're, we're supposed to have Leif, Leif Johansson from Bungie right. come on to uh, the podcast a little bit later. He got caught up at work because I, I guess they're busy doing stuff. <laughs> yes. Yay! Animated. Yay stuff. <laughs> Animated which, is, which is a good sign. Yep. <laughs> which is a good sign. So, so yeah, uh, Le- Leif should be on later. But for now, we're just going to talk about some stuff that we've been doing in the game. Like, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about Crimson Doubles later. I want to save that for when Leif is actually on here. But well, what's what's been going on this week? I, th- I know today there's been some big stuff that actually got released. Big, about the game. big stuff. Big, big, big stuff. Big. More big excitement stuff. in the community today than I've seen since the Taken King launched. It's true. This is true. I think well, the, why are people yeah. excited, Briar? All right, so this week in Destiny, Bungie's weekly update renamed uh, had some really big information in it. First of all, they uh, kind of reiterated that there'd be something new coming in spring uh, that would be a PvE-focused expansion of sorts, uh, and there would be a light level increase, there would be new gear to collect, and there would be uh, more stuff to play for PvE players. And they mentioned replayable, replayability. Uh, mm-hmm. which I found interesting wording just based on that. Uh, that's a lot of the wording they were using for Prison Elders as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> they also mentioned that there'd be another expansion coming later in the year, which I think it caught me off guard. Pope yeah. called it last week. Um, but I was really excited to hear that. And then the news that the rumor that Destiny 2 got delayed till 2017 was confirmed by Bungie. This is the first time we've heard any comment out of Bungie about Destiny 2. Uh, and they yep. called it a sequel. Well, and here's the thing. That Destiny sequel. Here's, yeah. an, here's the thing that they, a full Destiny sequel in 2017, it's kind of hard to call. In my opinion, it's difficult to say that the game was delayed because they never, they never, never announced, announced they never announced it. So we have internal, we have, we have, uh, you know, if you an believe internal that, delay. if we, it's an internal delay. And so. You know, I think that that should be clarified. I mean, it's it's something that we are anticipating. We are anticipating the game sooner, though. The right? announcement of the game to me has nothing to do with whether it was delayed or not. If it was delayed, it was delayed. If it wasn't delayed, it wasn't delayed. Right. If I they know. had if they had scheduled it for 2016 and then it was delayed, then it was delayed. It doesn't matter if they announced it or not. I agree. I agree. But I think that oh, the community you. is talking about it right now, and I think they're using the wrong language. That's all. I think okay. if we're if we're here to help educate and you know inform the community, I think that something as important as what is a what is an internal delay versus um, you know just hey they 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 had a they had they were they published that they were supposed to be going live with this thing on this date and then now they're having to back it up. That that mm-hmm. to me that although that may be semantics, I, I believe that means a lot as to whether or not their production teams are ready. You know I don't know. I, I think it's really exciting to know that we're going to get a light level increase, new PvE Agreed. content, Agreed. and new weapons, like new vendor yeah. gear, all that stuff yeah. in yeah, the sure. spring. I don't That's know if we'll get exciting. a new raid. I don't know if we'll get a Prison of Elders style content update. That replayability term, you know, I, I do remember that getting tossed around a lot with the mm-hmm. Prison of Elders before it was released. Um, but I am super excited to see new PvE content coming soon, coming soon, and then so, getting it again later in the year. Right. I, I don't necessarily think that the replayability is um, them coming back to like prison elders or mm-hmm. them hearkening to that. I think it's more of a response to what the community is saying that uh, the PVE right now is stale because there's no replayability that makes sense to do. Like strikes have no purpose to keep on playing them and so on and so forth right now. So I almost feel like this content drop is going to be some new PVE experiences, but a lot of older PVE repackaged with new things that are with it, like, you know, rotating modifiers or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then also having the potentially the drops be better. I hope, I hope that they like come back and say, guys, you're right. These drops are bad. Let's actually give you some more stuff and more things to go for a whole new set of, you know, like Vanguard gear, 
Crucible gear that's going to be interesting to grab. And hopefully not just one thousand yard stare model. Right. We were yeah, all going for sure. You know? I'm I'm actually getting ready to order like uh, one of those giant confetti cannon things. Uh, and I'm just gonna have it sitting next to my desk here. So when <laughs> ready I to go when you get, get that. Eight thousand yards <laughs> there, I'm just Woo! Just pop it and just confetti rains down everywhere. <laughs> Hopefully like God bless stream, America, start playing in the background. <laughs> I think that's L- Leif, uh, Leif just messaged me. He's uh, ready whenever we are to jump. Oh, oh, so I'll, I'll add him uh, in. Cool. So, well, I'll just tell him. Well, here I'll just add him to the call. Yeah, just add him to the call. Fuck it, we're not doing anything really. Um, I was just gonna say technical, technic, or technical wise for the audio. Do you want him to record also? Nah, nah, um, we got this. All right. Um, but yeah, I'm excited about it. I'm very like this is the first time that I've read one of those updates, even though it was small, but genuinely been like, oh my god, there's stuff coming that I'm excited about. Like I want to see these new weapons. I want to see I, the changes. I liked, I liked seeing PVE content. Yes, I, I, I like seeing those two words together. Yeah, mm-hmm. a lot of people I feel like missed that second update too. That second because the way it's worded is he talks. Deej talks about the the spring update, right? Yeah. Uh, but then he says, beyond that, the team is focused on delivering a large expansion later this year and full Destiny sequel in 2017. So that large expansion later this year kind of gets sandwiched between the last spring update se- paragraph and Destiny 2. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so a lot of people missed that today. Uh, I yeah. think it is exciting, though. It's you know We are getting two pieces of new content this year, and that's something, aside from what the live team is doing, on a uh, bi-monthly basis. You know, and this is kind of what we wanted, isn't it? Is we wanted yeah. we wanted those DLCs, we wanted those expansions along with the live team update. So we're getting exactly what we wanted. We just didn't know we were getting it. Yeah. And you, another you, really good thing is that we are seeing or we we got the we we got a a very vague roadmap, but yeah. more at least more in depth than just okay, there's going to be content coming in the spring. Right. We now right. know, we know the that plan. there's going to be yeah, yeah, there's going to be an expansion later on in the me, year. And then give me one second. Year, to grab him, I have to pull my screen over. Oh, okay. So, sorry, chat. Give me just a second. <laughs> Rip, poke, scream. Oh, hope my you have a good, God. Hope you got a good wallpaper in the background there. It's not <laughs> too bad. Use that 18% gray background, Pope? Or, I don't have the stream pulled up. What do you use? Um, This crappy piece of art that I got from somebody on the podcast. Whoa. Shade. Shade being thrown at me. <laughs> that art is beautiful. I think it's wonderful. That's why I have Time it as my place, desktop. Time and place, Pope. Time and place, man. Hey, I, you know, I would never say it if it wasn't true. Oh. Excuse me. <laughs> never mind. All right. Let's get you back up. Let's get you guys back over here. Oh, man. Oh, God. Your Skype window is just lit. That's the <laughs> my- only way to describe it. My Skype window. Oh yeah, do you, we got we got like six people up in this window now. It's amazing. I love it. <laughs> oh, right. oh. whatever. Okay, it, it, we'll get it working in a second. This will be fun to edit. Yeah, I love it. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> I was supposed to stop the recording, right? No, <laughs> that's a joke. That's a joke. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, who I'm is gonna... Le- I'm seeing in the chat who is Leif? Uh, Pope, will you, uh, you I, can I will, I will introduce him in just a moment when he okay. when he jumps in. Okay. okay. Um, Sweet. Anyone know any good jokes? No. Really, no one's going to say like uh... Destiny or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah, but I think uh, one of the reasons that we didn't see that or we saw that update come in is probably just because of the uh, Activision earnings report, which was also uh, yeah, updated right. today. Oh, is, is Hello. Hello? Hello? Yeah. What's up? Awesome. Hey. Oh, you know, doing this thing called the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about Destiny. Talking about Destiny. We were just actually getting warmed up onto uh, Deej's eloquent, you know, what, it, what does he call it now? This Week in Destiny? No, yeah, I know for this, sure. This oh, week I'm, at sorry, I'm sorry I'm late, guys. I, uh, I, I had a play test run late. I would have been here earlier. I felt really bad. Oh, it's fine. Oh, good. Good. 
I, I'd rather you play stuff, play test stuff. Yeah. Anyway, I'd rather you do that. Just, just yeah. slip a thousand yard stare with the god rolls into my postmaster, and we'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> be good, man. Whenever you're uh, slowly. His key. He keeps a little pile near his desk of perfect. Do it. <laughs> That's does he also does he oh. also ban people from getting them? Because um, <laughs> could, could you could you do something about unbanning Patrick? He seems to. Have, I'm so alone. He's I'm so, so alone. alone. I need a thousand yards there. Uh, he he bagged uh, Dev once and didn't know it, and we put yeah, him on the list. That's what happened. Uh, 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 that wasn't oh, me. Man. That was my brother who used my account. <laughs> so we have this theory brother, that there's geez. only a certain amount of thousand yard stairs that are allowed in the game at one time. So uh, to help him to help Patrick out, I delete one every week just to keep the the, the stock fresh, right? Keep doing it. No, right. keep doing it because I am getting one every week. It's just mm -hmm. horribly rolled. This is bad. Yeah. Okay. yeah funny story. I think week week three of taking king, I got a no. thousand yard stare with uh, ambush, um, one man army, quick draw, and um, hidden hand, and I've been using it ever since. Oh I don't God. think I've How do we get rid of this guy. I haven't dropped. I don't think it's dropped for me. <laughs> Who invited this guy to the podcast? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. He just comes down here and starts throwing all the good stuff. Uh -oh. Who does that? Yeah, it just <laughs> didn't happen, man. <laughs> I do the well, same thing, uh, Leif. <laughs> uh, we, uh, I, I saw in the chat people. People would like to know, Leif, uh, who exactly are. What do you do at Bungie? Yeah, I'm a uh, senior designer on the Crucible. I've worked. A little bit on maps, but mostly modes and, and systems. Mm -hmm. uh, Crimson Days was my more recent bit of, bit of work, but um, anything competitive, I probably I probably dabbled on in some some form or fashion. Cool. Uh, yeah, I've been at Bungie for about uh, two and a half years, um, and before that, I worked on a few CODs. And that uh, me and me and Pope Bear like talking about that every now and then. But oh man, <laughs> you worked you like the stories that you tell me about your Call of Duty days, like. This gentleman here is what I believe his like the, the the ideas behind it in Black Ops are the reasons why Call of Duty is so big right now in the competitive scene. To be honest, thanks, with you. man. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, for sure, dude. Like every single thing that, and that's not me brown nosing. That's like if you start like if you start looking at the some of the stuff that you were you guys put into Black Ops, it's why it's why Black Ops um, three so you know big right now. So. I mean, I, yeah. I gotta throw my old team and Vonderhaar some love though. Like if Vonderhaar yeah. heard that, he'd be like, hey, "Amen." <laughs> but uh, ab absolutely, like. Um, yeah. But uh, I mean, Destiny. Um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm playing it myself, man. I freaking, I've got three characters through Crimson Days. I'm probably floating in about fifteen hour, fifteen hundred hours, which Pope Bear like would probably laugh at. He'd be like, fifteen hundred hours. I've got like two characters with fifteen hundred hours each. <laughs> I've deleted more hours 1, than that. Fifteen hundred hours. Fifteen hundred uh, hours on each console minimum. I've probably in my life played played more Battlefield than any other competitive game. But at this point, I think Destiny's my number two. COD's definitely my number three. Like, I played a bunch of uh, TF1 and CS growing up. But like, you know, I've been playing competitive games since. Man, it's blurry. It's blurring my head. I have to go back real, real far back. It's just, I can't imagine doing anything else. It's like the thing that I get out of bed and I'm like happy about. Like, it's cool. like, I, I don't know what I, like, people are like, what else would you do? Be a banker or a doctor? I'd be like, man, I want to make competitive games. Like, uh, I'd love to talk about Crimson, but like, high level Crimson's like, man, even if you got problems with Crimson, like, working on something like Crimson's freaking awesome. Working at a work company like, like Bungie's amazing. Like, oh, my wife got home, so if you guys hear anything funny, that's that's my lady. All right. Well, um, cool. I I had a I had a question for you. Um, sure. Do you do you know offhand um, who designed the roses? I believe that was um, Cameron Pinard. Uh, I, 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 I'm so worried yeah, I'm going to give I, I, I think... the wrong dude, but it was a really really talented, awesome dude. So one I of think our better I... guys that killed it. I just want you to know that like I love the way those roses look. Like they just there's so much detail in them. Um, I, I wanted to give a shout out to. I know that sometimes the artists that work in, on these projects don't get the credit that, you know, they don't get any of the credit for, for for the work they do. So, Cameron, no, thanks, man. That, They're uh, beautiful. <laughs> Lindsay Rees, um, she's she she works with VFX on PVP. She killed it on the Crimson Fury VFX. She just put that thing together. 
Um, I had another guy, Matt Dudley is another artist who's just like one of our like secret ninja assassins that helped help put some of that stuff over the top. But just the little touches, like, I mean, it's, it's crazy though. Yeah. The bungee artists, like they go just above and beyond. It's, it's insane what the, what they can do in like a day that would take other people weeks. That's awesome. I need, I need to take an actual look at what that buff looks like because the only thing I, I, I try not to, you know, stay in their line of sight too long when someone oh, yeah. has a, has that buff. For, for obvious it's intimidating, reasons. man. You see a shoulder charging dude coming oh. at you with full red. It's it's like you know you're about to get it. It's true. Yeah, there's really nothing like a Sunsinger Warlock with that on that buff on. Um, that that, so, that 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 com- combination of the yellow the yellow flames with the red. It's just freaking intimidating as hell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, it was, like it's crazy because a lot of uh. A lot of the tricky work that goes into um, game mode design is like to make the like a VFX or objectives look like they don't blend into the environment. You have to make them kind of stupid looking. Like the designers <laughs> are always like, make it more arcadey and make it like look like Pac-Man stuff just dropped in the middle of the levels. And the artists are like, dude, this looks horrible compared <laughs> to like all this gorgeous environments <laughs> around it. So like hitting that sweet spot where something looks sure. important, but obviously like not just another super or not something that blends with the environment is like a really hard balance. Like the artists like work really hard to try to make it look like it's important, but also not look like it's just hitting you over the face. Absolutely. So it's also a really good thing. Um, like when the spark runner has it, it uh, a great job of how the spark doesn't look out of place in the game. It looks yeah. intentional. It in the game world, just like you really said, not looking cartoony. Like mm-hmm. it's easy to say, we'll just do it with UI. We'll just like you know fill the screen with 3D icons and be like, well, of course that's the objective. But like, you know, in the heat of combat, when you're near that thing, you're not going to see the UI. You will see the VFX and the art. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I wanted to get into the discussion of Crimson uh, or the the Crimson Doubles game sure. a little bit. How did you guys uh, decide on the elimination? Uh, game type being in uh being used for this event because previously we've had you know skirmish we've had skirmish uh then uh, double skirmish and then you guys decided to move it into more uh or move it into the elimination game mode and then reduce it down to two players yeah i mean the you know there's a lot of different ways to make modes um you know you really you really kind of have to think about the high level constraints first. Like I like building the box that I need to work in before I start overthinking like what I want to put in the box. Mm-hmm. And in this case, it was like, you know, the scope was a major constraint. Like we really had to be careful that we didn't like just go overboard and have something that like would make a better fit for like something that justified like full gear sets and being mm-hmm. being put on a more major release. Like, you know, the constraint right off the bat was hey, this is like a Valentine's Day thing, and that means that players are pretty much going to play it once a year. Like, yeah, if, we make something, if we make it something so awesome, it'd be like, I'm like, man, I need to put this in the rotators. Like, it right. couldn't be oversized. Mm-hmm. Um, that constraint alone was like, man, it has to be fairly derivative and also really speak to, like, what are the emotions I associate with, with Valentine's? Uh, and then the mode, the, the idea of elimination versus skirmish, because it was like, we did doubles last year. I love doubles. I feel like doubles deserves the spotlight. Doubles was like this underserved thing that really, really played great last year, but it's like didn't really have like its moment in the sun. It was like, well, this is perfect for Valentine's. Mm-hmm. And the, it really came down to uh, skirmish, elimination, or something new. You know, the reason I tilted more towards like elimination uh, was I feel like skirmish is deceptively snowbally. Like you really. Like, you get two guys, they lose a team fight, you know, the team that wins the fight now controls the center, gets special ammo, mm-hmm. and there's a decent chance that, the, the, you know, the team that's respawning gets basically put in bad position. They have to, like, unintuitively regroup, reposition themselves, and then actually get back into a fight. And that that might not be as noticeable, like, as far as accessibility, that might not be as noticeable to low-skill players that they're losing because they're basically getting split up. Mm-hmm. Um, Elim, on the surface, seems less accessible because it's like it has the flavor of a more hardcore game type. But having fresh starts, like quick goes, like you know, you win the team fight that pretty much cleans the round out. 
I felt actually was in some ways like close, close to the mark of like correct. And the, the twist that I wanted to put on it was basically a rubber band. I was like, hey, mm -hmm. like maybe I can buy accessibility dollars by building, you know, a buff or a mechanic that, you know, swings it back. That way, if, if you're playing this mode that feels really hardcore, you know, and some of the dude goes down, you know, the rubber band puts you back in it and makes the 2v1 more interesting than it currently is in Elim. And that that's what makes, that'll make casuals feel if they're first to die, that they're, they're not leaving their, their teammate frustrate, as frustrated. And on top of that, the, um, the 1v2 is interesting even if you lose it. You don't feel like, well, I might as well just wait for my grenade to come back and go for like a miracle snipe. Otherwise, this is like a mess. Like, I wanted the 2v1 to feel like the, the two-person person, the two-person team still has an advantage because we don't want to trivialize the fact that they did get a kill, but there's just a more interesting dance. Um, but I didn't know what the buff was, and that was just a whole other set of inter iteration trying to figure out what, what the right buff was. It ended up being really fun. The buff makes you feel like a superhero. You it's know, like true. When, you're, when your friend goes down, when your teammate goes down, you almost go into like a super overdrive. It's just fun to be that yeah. guy. And when the, you read this, just reminded about how powerful you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it's, it's like really the speed combination with re regening yeah. your health definitely adds to that. Yeah, it's re it, it's really deceptive. Like I got a lot of notes when we were iterating on it, particularly from like mid to low skill players that they were not feeling it enough and they wanted to crank it harder. And even the high skill players were like, I don't know, I think you go a little further. And the thing that we were looking at was uh, bonus aim assist, but the sandbox designers like, dude, that's gonna make the guns feel really <laughs> weird because they're gonna handle in ways that you wouldn't expect. Yeah, yeah don't do that. And then. And then damage resistance, and I was like, look, damage resistance, while making you feel powerful, is deceptive if it's not enough damage resistance to change the bullets to kill that your bone's throwing in at you. Yeah. It could create bad engagements that if basically you're having your 1v1 and I'm having mine, and you, lo you lose yours first and my buff kicks in at a weird time, it could save me in a way that's like mid-bullets. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, like, DR has like weird repercussions on like, you know, sticky grenades not, not killing, like, um, you know, golden guns possibly not killing in certain circumstances because the crimson yeah. buff stacks with, like, all these other, like, overshields, flame shield. I was just scared of DR, and it was basically the last trick in my bag that I hope I never had to reach, reach for. <laughs> and I was really happy that the buff felt like you had to be clever with it and set up your stuff to basically 2v1 correctly, and that if you were playing too loose, that, that you'd, you'd just run into team shot and die. But... If you use it for baiting, if you use it for like really careful revive play, if you use it to basically drag somebody out into one v one, so you can use it to your advantage, like it should feel like there's there's some some sort of skill curve to using the buff correctly, and that's that's been my happiest thing is that casuals think it feels cool, and high skill players feel like you know that they they can't just use it in a sloppy way. You have to be thoughtful how you use the buff. So you mm -hmm. so you have um you have some like when you're designing a game mode like this, I'm always curious about this. You, you lay out all these, like, wants, right? And you do yeah. play tests on them. But I imagine a lot of this doesn't, like, there isn't there isn't anything like putting it out into the wild. Uh, do you find that, are you getting, um, do you find that that's, all, that's a true statement? And then um, if, you, if it is, like, what kind of feedback are you getting from people that are playing it now? I mean, it's definitely playing less accessible than I was hoping for, like, um, you know, it's difficult to diagnose like the right mix of variables that makes it play, you know, uh, it, it just people like, I was hoping it was a it would be a little bit more pizza and beer than it is. Like, <laughs> right. Yeah, right. That would be for nice. Some, for <laughs> some players, it's true. Like I've been hearing people at work that are like lower skill be like, yeah, we paired up and played some matches and it was like pretty chill. And I'm like, the second you start getting into the higher skill brackets, it's like, <laughs> People yeah. bring knives, forks, and torches, and it's like right, you yeah. really have to play thorns. pretty rough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. People, people, are, people are playing pretty hard, and you know, do you, could, do you think like, the, my, uh... my, my mental process for that is like, man, maybe I needed to find like some some mayhem flavor juice. Like, what could I pour into the concoction to make people take it less seriously? Right, uh, right. I, I, hit, I, I feel like think... I hit the, the sweet spot for certain players, but for for a bunch of players, I feel like it's not. Not quite Valentine's kind of like, kind of like, loose and laughy. Like I mean, the chocolate ghost and like the sparkly ghost are a good clue. That's like, yeah, this like in the bounties that like, 
this isn't that this isn't that serious. Like you you can probably just chill, but it doesn't play that way. That's like that's definitely yeah. like the note I've been hearing. Mm-hmm. But I'm also hearing that they're having lots of fun, even though it's like more competitive than expected. So it's right. like with with so it's 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 within the striking distance, but not quite what I was hoping. Not not you, quite right. Do you think uh, uh, level advantages being disabled for this particular mode could probably have lent to that a little bit? I mean. Because you don't see Thorn in Trials of Osiris or Iron Banner or anything like it's that. True. And, I mean, the yeah. the big the big issue there was like how many pieces of content would I worry like a like base Crucible has year one content, so it's like if year one content is like if we're talking about mode that wasn't intended to be like, very competitive. When you when you walk into like Rift playlist, it's like it's not Thornville, right? And if there's no bounties that are basically like no seriously like go out there and win. I was hoping that, you know, people would play it similar how to play they play regular Crucible, um, and that level like level advantages comes with other other baggage for this particular experience, especially if it's like mm-hmm. I got a lot of friends that are like, yeah, I'm like 302 light and I play with you, but I you know I I, I hate that I can't it's soldier like, charge. I, I struggle with sticky grenades. Like I usually like to use sticky grenades. Like it's a little bit intimidating for mixed skill parties. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, the, the note that walked away from is that there's just there's year one gear that we just, you know, need to keep it, keep an eye on for just general balancing. Like our our balance patch yes. taxes aren't restricted to year <laughs> two. Um, yeah. You know, I think we're we're looking we're targeting April for for some changes, but uh, you know that that list hasn't yeah. finalized. But you know, I, I, I like the question's the right tool. Like you like level not not having level advantages has consequences, and it you know. The there are things there are there and there's definitely advantages. Like I, I looked at it pretty seriously, but I th- I thought it kind of like went against the tone of the event. Like level advantage to me says like bring your best stuff. Where I was hoping people were like, oh, I'm gonna goof off and freaking you bring my old universal remote and my freaking necrochasm and like yeah. every forum post that I saw where people are saying like they were just using like you know shadow price and like old old school stuff. That stuff would put my smile on my face, and I was I was hoping to go deeper down that road. Yeah, it's a, it's, 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 it's an echrochasm. It's, 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 it's cool. The bounty and it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it's cool yeah. to see um, lots of different guns in there, and I think some of the uh, accessibility piece of it led to, um, you know, there's kind of like this. Um, I found that there was the drop rate was a little slower than I thought it, you know, yep. should have been. But um, like, and I think that some people were going in, and it, 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 as an unfortunate byproduct of that is people just like suiciding or, you know, jumping yep. off the map just to, just to get through the, you know, burn through <laughs> yep, the rounds yep. and to uh, get the loot. And, you know, I, it was almost like, ah, oh, man, this is so, this is a lot of fun. If you're playing people, your skill, it's just like you, you get matched up against, you get matched up against somebody, you get ready for the game. And then they're like, they start killing themselves. So, yeah, no, yeah. For sure. there's a lot of factors, so many factors. I, I honestly feel for, you know, you devs, there's so many things that you have to consider. Huge um, amount. You know, you gotta, when you're considering how the pace of the game, you know, one of the things that is promoting people to do exactly that, the suiciding to get the loot, is the fact that these games, because of just general uh, map design, how big they are, people playing it. For example, I had a match on Pantheon that, that took like, I think it was 16 minutes total. <laughs> Uh, and to play 16 minutes and not get a drop, I can understand someone getting frustrated and then just wanting to suicide to kind of speed up that process. So I just I know there's just so many things you guys have to consider to get that sweet spot, what you want. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely. It, like the the rewards were definitely like uh, my read of SRL was that certain aspects of the reward were were a little rich for the you know the, for pacing. And <laughs> I say that as a person that got totally hosed on my scarf. I worked really hard to get a like. Like I got one scarf that entire event that was 305, and I think I probably played like 35 S raw matches in one sitting trying to get my scarf to drop, and it just didn't happen for me. But even then, in that world, I still felt like, you know, I was getting purple helmets. I have this huge stack of like, th- you know, 310 plus purple helmets, and I think we looked at the numbers today, and that the, the um, the the ghosts for for Crimson Days isn't far off that number. It's a little bit lighter. And I was told reverse. I got, I got on three characters. I think I got seven ghosts yesterday. Uh, like, what? Whoa. Yeah. what? Yeah, you guys can look. My wow. highest was three eighteen. I have got two chocolates and four sparklies. Uh, each each of my characters has two each. And nowhere near that. Uh, yeah, no. yeah. I don't have a no, single for sure. one. Yeah, 
That's exactly. It's so crazy. I played. Uh, I played about. I paid six hours um, on the first day and four hours on the second. So out of ten ten hours, I got um, one ghost. Yep. So yeah, then, I got about six hours in, and I haven't gotten any. Yeah. It's so like it should no never ghosts. happen. Right. You guys are basically describing something that should not happen. It's like yeah. either yeah. a bug in the table or, you know, it's, it's Right. Oh, but it's, it's, I think, you know, I that's think, actually really great to hear that that might be a bug in the table, though, because I'd much rather think that there's something with the drop rate right. um, issue as opposed to it being intentional. Because if it was intentional, yeah. it's like, right. guys, that is just well, I think, from I, I, too much of a grind. Yeah. yeah, I think the game mode is super fun. I mean, I put out a I put out a Twitter like polls asking, hey, what do you guys think? And over 50 percent of people uh, that played Crimson Doubles thought that it was really it was fun or great you know like the, those 50 percent of the people of like i think it was 800 people that took the poll um said it was fun or great you know versus they didn't like it or it was bad, the worst thing since hitler so that like <laughs> th those were kind of the options right it so, <laughs> um but it, it it of those people that really liked it i i wonder if um you know, something that True Vanguard in, brought up earlier is that it might be lower skilled players that are finally. What were you saying? It was about lower skilled players that. Yeah. So the, yeah, some of the feedback that I was receiving is that it's the more casual players who are getting paired up against casual people who are enjoying it, and and rightfully so, and uh, having a little bit more of a fun time. But it's on the higher end of the skill bracket that you see uh, so little weapon diversity. Yeah. You see, and and even subclass diversity. The teams that are going full tryhard uh, to the to the max, you're going to see double sun singer with thorn, um, you know, and people exploiting ways of of getting special ammo in round one, um, and that that kind of saps the fun out of it and makes you feel like you're playing in something that's supposed to to have a laid back light atmosphere. It makes it feel like you're in a highly competitive atmosphere where you can't relax. Where suddenly, I, for example, I, I have matches uh, playing Crimson Doubles where I'm going into it with my Telesto and my, you know, Satarian yeah. Rapier from year one that I just always have fun with. And as I'm inspecting my opposition, I see the most tryhard stuff possible. Oh, yeah. and, and I know because <laughs> it's skill based matchmaking that if if I derp around, I'm gonna lose. And frankly, I don't. I don't like to lose. I mean, I'm not all about winning, but no one enjoys getting their butt handed to them. So right. of course, I'm forced to go with my best stuff. Yeah. No, I agree, man. It's a. It's a pretty classic design problem. It's like. Yeah. You know, the the, the amount of like fury players will put on your game if they're basically playing for inches. Like. Yeah. It's tough. Like, there's a you know a lot of that stuff. You know. Yeah, it's different. I mean, I'm in the boat. Like, I was playing with Triple Wreck, you know, last night, and like, anytime we had a tough match, I'm like, man, I should, I should put on my my business suit. Like, why am I goofing off with like these other guns? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. even when there's no incentive, like, there's no incentive. It's just like you're just like, man, I just it paired me up with some killers. Like, I gotta show these guys what's up. What am I doing? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you know, it's. Well, so how do you promote weapon diversity? That's the question. How do you promote that? Do you do it with bounties? Uh, we we have seen that you can do some creative things with these playlists, though. Are there uh, things that you can do even with weapon balancing within a, within just a playlist alone? Can you do that, where you can just manipulate how weapons work within a playlist as opposed to just blanket, you know, modifications? I mean, it's a really dangerous precedent because yeah. it splinters it splinters the game in ways that are actually really hard to support, like. Um, you know, a classic example of like, I mean, this is like an old problem. Like I remember I was working on Call of Duty years back and we had the marathon perk and, um, we also had the, uh, you know, that, that item that lets you respawn tactical insertion tactical and we're insertion. like, Hey, Hey, tack insert is mandatory to play demolition and, you know, marathon or extended sprint is, is super optimal in like capture the flag cause it's, it's, it's mobility. Like, you know, the second you start saying like, "Oh man, we're going to alter the way that this thing functions to make make sure that it's it's a uh, there's more choices on what you load out for a given experience," creates a hard bottleneck on the quality quantity of experience you have. And if if there's only a certain percentage of the player base that basically is like playing the meta hard, it's like you have to you have to like a always support your game. You, you know, like 
you can't you can't let you can't let your your sandbox be be solved and people are you know using the same stuff you need that weapon diversity but you know the second you start branching it it's like really it's like you, you it could become almost overwhelming if you actually plot it out like how many experiences mm -hmm. like the value of fast res and trials as opposed to the value of fast res in clash which is non-existent versus the value of yeah. fast res and strikes versus you know like you know it's it, that's almost like a full-time team's job and it's at the expense of creating new content like a new guns sure, new, sure. new abilities mm -hmm. um it's yeah. just a really careful balancing act i mean but at the end of the day to answer your question like what do you do it's like yeah you gotta you gotta hit those balance patches man you like you gotta break up that meta you gotta keep things like fresh right. you gotta find a way to make people feel comfortable like using more of their gear like there's no there's no group of gear in destiny that we've pointed at and said we're not supporting that gear as far as we're concerned like there's you know a wild wide pool of stuff and that players shouldn't be like feel like they're cheating on their Mida when they use their, you know, <laughs> Suros. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, do so you have feel you ever like, considered... Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I was, I was going to say, with, like, with the current state of skill-based matchmaking, do you feel like there's a lot of room for adjustment or improvement on it for how, you know, like, like high-skilled players go into doubles? If you have two high-skilled players going there, it is sweat after sweat after sweat after sweat. It's like you got you got to have your try-hard pants on tight. And do you Super think... Super tight. Do you think that's that should be that way? Do you think like that was? Yeah, yeah, that, can you can you adjust it per playlist? You know, with the skill based matchmaking, because like it'd be nice to have maybe a try hard game and then like I don't know three or four beers and pizza games. It's <laughs> tough. You know I mean? Like the beer and pizza games are like a deceptively hard problem because it's like it's. I mean, the question I like to ask is, you know, what would you expect the the win rate for top you know, 10% of player base be like 60, they win 60% of their games, 55% of their games. Uh, 80, because 85, if, 90, <laughs> 85, 90. <laughs> like that's, if it's 85, 90, it's like, I'm just they're kidding. not. They're not. The, they're not, not the highest. Match. Match. I'm uh, kidding. Right? Yeah, they're not like, yeah. <laughs> Remember that, you know how they always showed your win percentage in uh, um, Call of Duty. So for yeah. and then you you everybody used to like check your win your win loss percentage you know before they matched up with you. It's super big deal. <laughs> super big deal. What's your win loss? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I, I mean, should, I, it, I see what you're saying. Like, if in order for high skill players to have like a sixty forty, they majority of the time they have to get matched up against high skill players because that forty percent of the time they're going to get knocked down by people I mean, of that. It's skill. a really. It's a really like important and deep philosophical question because you could argue in call of duty there's rubber band mechanics and investment systems that make low skill players less sensitive to the fact that they have a sub 50 percent win rate that they basically have other objectives you know mm -hmm. you know you get grenades on respawn if you have a long life because you're having a good life you get less grenades you if you're shooting lots of dudes you're giving your position away on your mini map if you're a noob that's respawning a lot that hasn't shot like you have like it's more of a positional game and because of it like you know there's more room for high skill players to be match made with low skill players in a way that doesn't make the low skill players feel like they're they're being smothered but you know that compromises a lot of the core core game you know core gameplay and it it it, ch it changes so much things fundamentally that's like it's a hard balancing act like death streaks like i i i uh a lot of the pain like i i I was one of the big advocates for cutting death streaks out of COD, and like a lot of the argument was like, we need rubber banding specifically as a backstop to when we mix high skill with low skill. And in Destiny, I don't feel that like there's room or even it would be that good to basically litter the game with a lot of rubber band mechanics. Like, can oh, you get supers if you're struggling. You get you get yeah, can only you special rubber banding. Is? Oh, rubber banding is the opposite of snowballing. It's basically like if a team is struggling, the game has mechanics to put money in their pocket to help put, put, get them back in. Um, for example, League of Legends. Like, if you kill a, low, a player that's unperforming, they're worth less gold. And if you kill a player that's performing really well, you get more gold. Like, they have like okay. stealth mechanics that basically try to get the team that's losing back in it. Um, Death Streaks is the more like on the nose example. It's like literally, it's a the, benefit for the, the the physical example of that in, in Sparrow, Mario Kart Sparrow Racing Mario Kart. League is the is the right. gates opening up and getting wider the farther you fall back and the more boost you get from each gate. It's mm -hmm. true, and SRL is a, I think a great example of where you could mix low skill with high skill and like the high skill player 
has to play perfect. But even if they're far ahead, like the low skill players could be jockeying for third, fourth, and fifth, and it doesn't feel like they're getting dunked on. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, in mm-hmm. most of Destiny, though, because you don't have like those tricks to basically like hide a forty percent win rate, like you know, the what what is a high skill player's you know pizza and beer playlist because he's being match made with lower skill players for that low skill player because of the 40% win rate, he's, he's having a sweatier time than anything that high skill players ever experience because high skill players have never been put in a situation where they're hmm. losing most of their engagements or sort right, right. Yeah. It's like, that is it's, a really it's, philosophical it's, question. I had not yeah, actually right. like I've been on this end of the line just bitching about it, you know, to be honest with you. And it's a very comfortable place to be because ignorance is <laughs> it's just yeah, this really it's, it's this beautiful place where I just sit here and, you know, point fingers and stuff and it's great. So um this is like I I'm seeing like the philosophical like question that you have to to get into to create a playlist like this. I'm 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 wondering like have you considered in 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 making a playlist for the community like i was a huge fan of gun game like i love me some gun game gun oh game would be classic example would be amazing yeah. like so it's, can you talk a little bit about like the thoughts of like the the are, are there any can you talk about maybe any gun any playlist that you use to um help um inspire crimson days i mean i love making party games they're actually like they're really fun to work on. They're really fun, like specifically for a lot of these reasons. Like another philosophical point, like deep down in my stomach, like I get really nervous about like elitist playlists that you go to and you feel like you're not a member of the club, like you're visiting. My favorite thing about playlists like Gun Game is you feel like, you know, it's your playlist, even if you're not having like the best time because you're you're you know going through all the guns, you're trying things out. Like good party games. Uh, you know, feel like home. And like when people tell me that they have like a special connection to like mayhem and that when mayhem's gone, they feel like they're, there's like something missing in their ecosystem. I was like, dude, I get it. Or Fizzer Inferno. Like, uh, I mean, I just, in general, when I, when I talk about games, I'm like, you know, games like World of Warcraft, like people go on dates, they put a ring on it, they get married and then, you know, they leave for a while to, to see other games, but those games are they're just they're just dabbling. They go back to basically like the game they're married to. And competitive playlists often are the same way, at least in I think a healthy ecosystem. There's there's tends to be one or two that's like your bread and butter that like it just plays the way you want it. And when you know somebody touches something or twists a knob or like, you know, they introduce a bug that messes with your home, that's like more personal than if somebody like, you know, makes a change to one of the other playlists, you know, uh on on and cod that was that was like a hardcore playlist yep. that was you know those guys were yeah. those guys were really protective of their ecosystem and felt yep. neglected and you know and other like you know when we're, when we're looking at party party game modes it's like that that sense is really important because it's like it has to have just a little bit enough of its legs where you feel like you know it's not a total sideshow and like it just it just superficial and anyone can have fun but like you're gonna get bored of it in two weeks which is really easy to do Mm -hmm. but it can't can also be the reverse where it's like you know you find yourself taking it seriously every time you play it and by the time you played it five times in a row you feel like you can only play it seriously like you know a great party game mode it just has to find that that like just that notch and it does it fits it it finds like a pretty good place in the ecosystem where Everyone knows you can go there for a good time and like a cool down. It's the thing that you play at the end of a night yep. when you spend all your sweat. So, like, so here's the thing though. Right now, as somebody who gets matched up against a lot of people that want to try hard, uh, I I don't feel like I have a party playlist unless it's mayhem. Yeah. And do you think now I, this is going to be a hot topic? And I don't mean to drop this on you right now, but, <laughs> but you're going to. Uh, yeah, do you, you can, think? I'm going anyway. <laughs> but I'm going to. Do you think if we had custom matches, so people who were high skilled that could continue to match up against other high skilled players in the community that want to do that, would weed out a lot of that every time I go in the crucible, I can't relax type of thing for somebody who wants to, or, as opposed to, you know, it, um, and so that population could then go yes. and match up and have tournaments and that type of thing? Because yeah. I feel like that's what's happening right now. That high skill pool is getting really angsty because yeah. there's no way of consistently matching up against each other. Uh, for choice of connection and all that, you know? 
right? Yeah. Or, I'm gonna, or, I'm, or yeah. in addition to that, not to cut you, just add to that. Piece, I know what you're going to say, but keep going. <laughs> or a, a ranked yeah, I know playlist. this is a hot topic, and I'm sorry to bring it up. You know, or a ranked playlist. I mean, like a I, legitimate. I didn't even say that. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Pope. It's all right. Uh, it's just something I've been harping on for you for, for I a could, while. I could yeah. tell the look on your face. I was like, I know exactly what you're going to say. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll give you a complex answer. All right. Um, Love it. I'm down for definitely, complex. definitely more yes than no. Like, um, it's very e like, you know, I I love private matches, custom games. Like, there's all sorts of complexity as to, you know, putting it together and you know where it lives in our ecosystem. Like, all sorts of deceptive challenges. Why, you know, it, it finding its way into the game one day, or it's it's struggling to you know be you know. Be, be this thing that we can deliver in the short term. Like, you know, there's all sorts of realities behind behind it, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about like what it actually does for the ecosystem. Right. I could argue very easily um, playing devil's advocate more so than I have most times in my life because I really believe in the thing um, that private matches, because they're very hard to integrate into the investment game and because they have a high social friction because you have to arrange it yourself and there's, there's basically a barrier of entry that it, it doesn't scratch the itch for as many players as you'd think because mm -hmm. even players that are interested in like going hard are in love with the convenience of the match made playlists. I mean, if the, 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 the like resistance to the, the fire team only playtest, I think, illustrates like how much more difficult it would be to make private matches like a really important cornerstone of, of like the crucible play and what you do in an average session. But that's all devil's advocate. On the other mm -hmm. hand, I'm like, I agree. It's like if there's a if there's a place for that, it drains the swamp. And honestly, like that's the only reason, you know. Well, I, well, I shouldn't say that. That that was one of the principal reasons that um, Black Ops Two League play when I was when I was fighting for it for, for so many years back. That it um, that it really got traction is because it was this this idea that like, hey, like we don't want these full six person parties like trying to like roam the public playlists just wailing the countryside, like trying to find another group of like six players that can, can challenge them. Like if we build a place that they, that they really enjoy and then where they can get that out by the time that they've like, you know, done that, they'll come back to these normal playlists to like less in the mood to basically yeah. like stir trouble. And, mm -hmm. it, and, and mm -hmm. in hindsight, I feel like it's true that when you have, when you have these places that like, you know, like, or just it's just it's more understood that you that that's where you go to do that. It does I think bring down like the level of tension and ferocity and in, in the base playlists. But yeah. uh, I mean a lot of that's hypothetical. Like Destiny, its own its own IP. It has its own you know unique community and player base. And there's all these other factors that go go into it. Just just as Crimson Days surprised me every day on like how competitive it is or isn't or how accessible it is or isn't. Like. A lot of that stuff's an open question of what it would actually do for the game. Like we could believe in those features and still, still not be entirely confident that that's exactly the issue it addressed. Like, right. I mean, mm -hmm. opt-in voice was supposed to do a bunch of things. Like, and I'm glad we put in opt-in voice, but like, the way the community demanded opt-in voice, you know, early, you know, D14 Destiny, right. like, like it just it didn't do what people thought it would do. People are happy to have it, but it's still this like. You know, who knows what more additional steps you need and features and possibly years of development to basically build the thing that actually does does what we want it to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I hear you, and I appreciate the answer on it. I just, it's tough. It, so what I've seen on Twitch and how the community has taken, um, I mean, I'm sure you're aware of, like, people going to classic playlists and trying to match up against each other. Yeah. It seems like there's so many steps that the community has taken to try to enable this ability to just play against the people that they want to play against as opposed yeah. to going in publicly or into it, public it, matches. And I it, get that like yeah, it's yeah. a much smaller percentage. I totally get that. But at the same it, time, that yeah. percentage is a lot more viewed in terms of YouTube yeah. and Twitch. Oh, yeah. You know? I, I don't, I, I'm not going to devalue that for a split second. And like, I mean, I'll go a step further. This is what I was, I was talking to Triple Rec last night about that on one hand, it's really inspiring that we've got a community that is engaged enough and just outright cool enough that they're willing to go the extra mile to like get the experience they want out of the game. Mm -hmm. But as a designer, not even a game designer, just 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 as like a person that that does design for a living, something that inconvenient 
like the fundamentally inconvenient is like if I opened up an iPhone and I had to like, you know, enter a, a code to get it to do the thing that I want to do just to do, open a basic app, like, you know, or a, a car designer that's like that there's, there's a trick that you need to do to start the car because the, the designers like decided to put the ignition in the club box. It's like, it's like, it's like painful when people have to like do massively inconvenient things to, to make the machine do the thing they want to do. Like, like I still like, you know, the thing that I go to sleep thinking about my like utopian ideal for game design is you can put the disc in like half asleep from coming off work, get 15 minutes of play, feel like you got 11 minutes of awesome out of that 15 minutes and you could put it away and like watch Netflix with your kid and that that's clean as possible. That is a streamlined, there's like minimal loading screens that like whatever, if that's, if you can get that out of the disc, like I can go, I can, I can sleep well at night. And the fact that, that, that there's anything that interrupts that, like, uh, one of my favorite stories is uh, one of the things I'm most proud of in my life is setting, being able to set the default executable on BO1 to, 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 to competitive because those 15 yes. seconds of helping in the disk to basically like get to the thing you want. And if, if I found another way to do that, there was an easy way to get into matchmaking with less buttons. If, you know, BO1 in-game friends list was basically because Xbox Live friends list was too slow. It was costing you seconds. And that this utopian ideal of like these 15 minute sessions would get in the way. And, and if mm -hmm. as players, you guys have an experience that you have to go into the classic player list and like range all this stuff. It's like so opposite of that ideal. It's like drives me nuts. And I'm like, man, we need to do this better. But, you know, the real, the real like, like the expensiveness, the priorities, the design work. There's so many. There's so many barriers, like and obstacles, to basically like do that to solve that problem. But it's just I, I would completely agree that most players probably wouldn't even use this. But I, I would argue that even the players who didn't use it would see the benefits from it just from seeing competitive play. You know, easily played. Like seeing tournaments on Twitch or you know maybe supported by Activision and MLG. Oh, yeah. You know, seeing this stuff would just. Uh, it'd be really enjoyable for Destiny players who didn't necessarily use the private matchmaking. It'd be, it just, it, it'd make the entire Crucible experience just more fun as a spectator. Right. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I, even I'm if just... I never actually logged into private matchmaking, I still might enjoy that feature just because I get to watch, you know, my favorite two teams go head to head or a, or a great yeah. Destiny tournament on MLG.TV or something like that. No, man. Yeah. You, you don't have to convince me. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. It just, you know the the you know the the games it's it's a it's a big it's a big space and it's like you'd be surprised the number of things that like seem easy and the number of things that are like deceptively hard there's i don't know anyone or i haven't met anyone recently at bungie that's like you know i don't understand why we don't, why why people are asking for that like isn't that for like 12 people like it's just not it's just not a belief like people people get it like it's it's expected like you, you know mm -hmm. like and that, yeah, no one, no one devalues the Twitch streamers or the spectator experience or the YouTube experience or just, just being able to, like, you know, walk around a map that just came out. Like, if there's a new map that's released and you just want to check it out, like, that's not a yeah. hardcore experience we're talking about. We're talking about a fairly, fairly common use case of people just wanting to check out what's in the game, like, conveniently. And there's, there's a lot of little cases like that it, it covers. It just you know, if you come up with a list of everything the game needs right now and you realize like, you know, what could be the potential bottlenecks as far as engineering or UI or audio, like there's, it's, you know, it's tough, man. It's like, it's, this is what I come in and, you know, like I haven't, I, like I said, no one at Bungie is just is clueless on this one, I promise. And it's, yeah, <laughs> like, for sure. I think, yeah. I think we, uh, I think when we look at something awesome, like, um, so crimson days right and you see the potential for um varying playlists and the way that they can galvanize the community to get together and play and have fun with uh, the live events uh picking your brain and seeing what you know you like and what you value is um is really is really important for us because it helps us to understand you know what we may be getting in the future um, or the direction that Bungie's going with um, with playlists in general. I think that the idea behind PVP right now is, is that it's content that we can access and play with our friends while there's a lack of content, right? 
And so mm -hmm. there's a lot of interest and focus on PVP. So there's a lot of really good questions and ideas being floated around on the community. And where Absolutely. do you go? Yeah. Where do you go to, uh, if you're the community right now and you want to, you have a cool idea for a playlist or you want to um, help influence what's going on, where do you go to read that stuff? Where do you see and it influences you? Oh man, uh, I'm on like Destiny Reddit probably twice a day. I try to catch people, like if that stuff gets up upvoted, I see it for sure and that gets okay. kicked around. And I know that the other designers do that as well. Um, I, I mean, I use the Bungie forms as well, but honestly, I have a little bit of a harder time like so sorting through it, trying to find like the gems. Um, it's, I understand that. <laughs> yeah, I understand the best interface on there for navigating. Yeah, uh, it's it's. I, I man, I, I like the community is awesome, man. Like they've pitched so much good little things and little like it's crazy because like. And I, an idea will start like as one very specific thing, but once it's gotten kicked around, you know, Bungie, it comes out in another incarnation that you wouldn't expect. Like, do you don't realize it's like super hard to like catch the thread of that? That's where it came from. Like, uh, we're just we're lucky that you know people care that much. That they're like pitching ideas. I've I've read some pretty pretty sick stuff on on both forums actually, and it's it's just tough because like. You know, PVP like it might be one very specific piece of piece of tech that we need to do that, and then immediately that's like, well, now we need to like make it bigger if we're gonna be if we're gonna be, you know, associating, you know, tech with it. It's like there's a, sp a specific scope for the mode that that's associated with. Like you can't have this mismatch where like it's really easy for the designers to make a pretty pretty decently sized experience, but it comes with a huge engineering, you know, um, cost with cost it along with it and you're like man if we're spending that we might as well go bigger like there's just always the, you know the machine's always unpredictable in that sense of like you know what you could really get out of it i feel bad because a lot of times the community is like hey what about this exact thing and i'm like oh man there's a version of that that's half as cheap and maybe 10 percent better if we <laughs> throw out those two pieces and add this other piece and then you play test it and you're like i was totally wrong there's this <laughs> whole other thing that we should do with this like uh it's it's a rabbit hole yeah. Right. Sure. One of the coolest things we saw with update 2.1.1 is the the changes you guys made to special ammo. I was wondering yeah. what what, were, what was the thought process into changing that and seeing that come into Crimson Doubles that's like everybody's first like experience with the new special ammo changes. I was wondering what you guys felt about that how it's been how it's been reacted to by the community. I mean, it's makes me happy that it's I feel like people agree with the spirit of it, which is like you know the the primary versus primary encounters are really good, and some of the three v three game types felt like they were just a little bit too dependent on special weapons, and that you basically like if you're if you're dealing with hard scope snipers and shotgun rushers, just a certain quantity of the match, it feels like you know you're missing out on that primary versus primary, and like mm -hmm. on top of yeah. that, like trying to have more gameplay associated with seizing special ammo crates and being like, well, we're going to rush those dudes because we know what, what, what special ammo they're, they're camping is more interesting like, than just having it right off the bat. Um, there's definitely pros and cons to, the, to, 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 to it, but like special ammo in general is, is, is a really difficult mechanic like on multiple levels to, to iterate on because it services so many different like, experiences and archetypes. Like, it it makes me sad that every time we iterate on it, we know that there's going to be some pain associated associated with it. But it's like, it's just necessary. It's like if we just incubate it forever, trying to like make everyone happy and make sure that it's it's just absolutely nuts and bolts tight. I feel like we'd have a real hard time like making it better. Like this last release, it made me happy. I'm glad it, it went out with Crimson Doubles because I feel like we really really got to take it for a ride and see what it was about and. Even if it was a licky bucket with icebreaker and um, and the sidearm, Sign like yeah. mm -hmm. it's like it's been fun, man. I've been enjoying. It. I've been playing a lot, and like you know, knowing that they're not going to be hard scope sniping me at the start of the you know round one is is cool. Like I just I, I feel like a oh, man. Like, man, here's my window. Let's we'll see if they. We'll see what happens. And even if I lose, I'm like yeah, yeah. Like at least I didn't get like run into hard scopes. Yeah. 
No land beyond. Well, I gotta say that one of the things I really <laughs> appreciate about the uh, the special ammo nerf is that it it addresses the imbalance of special use to primary use without actually affecting how the special weapons behave and how yeah. they perform. Yeah. So yeah, because the problem is when you when you continually nerf the special weapons themselves, you're gonna have a huge wave of negative feedback because so many people are so attached to shotguns and snipers that they're gonna absolutely hate that. But what about pulse I, rifles? I like, yeah. You mean pulse rifles? You mean fusion rifles? <laughs> fusion rifles. Talk about fusion. I knew what you meant, dude. I'd love to see some more. I, I've been pushing for fusion, oh, uh, yeah. fusion Friday tomorrow in trials, but uh, we'll see if it happens. Plan anyways, C. Plan I C is a, it's, uh, it's, uh, look out for that guy. He's an assassin. It's pretty sick. But uh, yeah, I, just all that to say, I do appreciate how the nerf itself doesn't affect the performance of the weapons, but still addresses the issue. Yeah. I'm with agree. you, man. Yeah, credit to uh, Sam Box and the PvP designers that worked on that. Like, uh, I've been giving notes on special ammo, but kind of letting them iterate and find their way. And um, I like where they're going. I feel like I feel like they're they're definitely on top of it right now. Special ammo is a common conversation around our desks, you know, especially today. It's like we definitely didn't feel like we made changes, and we're gonna just kind of wait and see for a while. I feel like we're we're looking at it pretty aggressively. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I th- I I think it's hard for people to understand in chat like it's really difficult for Leif is um has a specific job at uh Bungie. He's a, you know, play he works with PVP and some of the questions that they're asking me to ask you or ask you to bring up into this conversation are out of your wheelhouse. And oh, yeah. we, I mean, we completely appreciate you being on this podcast and answering the questions and, and, and venturing into talking about stuff. But, you know, he doesn't, um, he doesn't deal with some of the questions that you guys are asking. So we're going to try to focus on, um, you know, the crimson days, the his work with the live team how that how you know you got a chance to work with the live team for this uh project but you're not on it right you're not technically yeah on no the for li- sure um uh, how, to, how did to, that to how, address, how was that put together i'm sorry go ahead uh, no but right before i answer your question i just just for the sake of the the you know the people that are asking probably pve questions like i like to say multiple times it's like bungie's a 700 person company and it's like full of people that are like really, really good, really like shockingly good at the, at the things that are on their plate. And it's pretty common for you to ask people like, hey man, like what's going on with this, uh, this aspect of the game? And you're like, man, I've been like, I've been into my stuff pretty deep. Like I'm friends with those guys. Like I hear things. Often when I interact with the community, they'll ask me questions about PV and I'm like, I'm like, dude, like you, I know slightly more than you and there's a good chance that if I spoke on it, even if I knew I was talking about that the information's changed or I'm misrepresenting another professional's like position or their work or I don't because I don't have their skill set, I'm I'm accidentally trivializing something that's really difficult. Like it's actually really tough in my case when, when somebody like well I have another bungee dev basically try to try to speak to the challenges of my do- job and it's like it's tough, man. It's like even even if you've done it for a few years, you're still you're still trying to grasp how difficult it is to do like really simple things like I work on spawning for for PvP like spawning is one of the most complex things I've ever encountered in my entire life and it's like even like even somebody that had worked on spawning for a year is probably still ramping up on how challenging like certain aspects of that system are just most of the things in the game like I have all the respect in the world for the raid designers and raid designers tell me like this is what we can do along this period of time there's not an inch in my body that's basically like oh, I, I wonder if they just did this instead of that like I wonder if they could do that better or faster I'm like man that's like that is a black hole it's an alternate universe to me like they're in that content they're looking at that content like eight hours a day for years trying to figure out how to make it better and like the battle scars and the wounds you get from basically cut content false starts stuff that was working well you know right that fell apart in your hands like stuff that didn't play test well like you know, like you wear those lessons out and like, it's, it's, it's like, it's a thing. Like I wish that like uh, the dudes that are probably asking you PV questions on the stream right now can understand. It's like, you know, it's pretty rare. Like it would take you years of your life on just one aspect of the, of the, like one of the most humbling parts of my job is to have to tell an animator that's worked at Pixar that his animation or her animation doesn't quite work for uh, an experience that I'm working on knowing full well that like, 
the, the thing they, the thing they, they do, there's probably only a handful of people in the world that can do it as well as they can, and it's not quite right. And I might be asking for something that's completely unreasonable as a designer, you know, and that I have this mandate so that I'm protecting the player experience, but really I, I'm looking at animation that I fully don't understand the work and craft and care that went into getting this thing just the way, the way it is. Like, it's really difficult, like, especially, at a, like I said, a 700-person company where there's entire sections. Um, but yeah, same thing with the live team. You asked me like, you know, what's it like working with the live team? Like same deal. Like they have to think about timeframes and windows and like drills and be, and be nimble in ways that some of the other teams in the, the building just don't understand. Like they have to deal with resource constraints and deliverables in ways that we just like, we can spend, like my team can spend years working on stuff, you know, can getting it right, dropping it like. Uh, the live team, because their windows are so much smaller, like they just have to be so much leaner and more careful and more risk averse. It's really easy for I think for uh, a live team to overplay their hand or to take on so much risk. And there's literally no time to react because they spend all their dollars basically like reaching, trying to trying to get some like you know push their team beyond their limits, and they just don't have they don't have the time. So like working with them with Crimson, Crimson Days was really a pleasure because they believed. They believed in the vision. They they respected, you know, the mode work. They, you know, they they believed in that core, and they really just made plays. They're like, man, like, you know, let's let's just pour awesome. Let's see what resources we can get. Like, they just kept it loose. There wasn't like a meeting where we're, we were just planning the thing out and we did it. Like, each of the live team members like found ways to contribute. Like, prioritized it, and and really importantly, thought about how it plugged into the game. Like. Um, the live team's really sophisticated, and they, they knew f full well that Crimson Days was going to drop into a content route, and that it could it, it could be seen as you know or perceived as a you know as 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 a loss aversion. Like, oh, you're giving me this at the expense of that, and that that would put like you know a dark shadow on the experience. Like, that's the stuff. Like, you know, those like philosophical, like high level design questions that they have to think about every day. Like, you know. Hypothetically, they, they, they could have like, you know, somebody on their team that was like all about crazy MTX and it's a reverse. Like they're super responsible and thoughtful. Like MTX anything, they're like take all the care in the world. Like these guys take it super seriously that it's done the right way, that it's like, you know, something that Bungie could be proud of. And if the MTX anything comes out, like even the slightest bit sketchy, like they're they're their own worst critics. And it's like the rest of the, these other teams at Bungie just don't don't have those types of challenges and particularly that the live team is like on like frontier ground there's not a lot of live teams on console for major shooters like like they're inventing things it's crazy like i it's it was really a privilege to work with them and i, I really feel like they killed it on it killed it on crimson days and did you know did everything they could to support me and like i'm i'm pretty excited to see what they're working on next i'm just hoping that like the community digs what they're doing and you know like I mean, I, there's I always going to be the, growing pains, but like, I think, I, the, the, yeah. I think the community has had a fairly like positive response to the the Crimson Days game mode as well. I'm hoping that uh, you probably can't confirm this, but that maybe time was clearly split. Time, sorry, time was clearly put into this, and maybe just like Sparrow Racing League, we could see it come back in a future update uh, as like uh, for another week or something, and maybe. Improvements made to matchmaking, so we can get more of that pizza and beer type thing. Uh, pizza and beer. Pizza and beer. Pizza and beer. <laughs> I want the game mode. <laughs> I, I, I echo that. The game mode itself is actually a, a fresh change of pace. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't play like everything else, and I think that you guys really nailed the buff. I know you talked about that a bit earlier, but we didn't get to say anything from our perspective. But I thought the buff it plays out really well, and it makes you even when you are the the two man team that's up. It makes you really consider how you're going to approach that engagement. I find mm -hmm. myself dropping supers one v one a lot more when I'm going against a guy with that buff, more so than I do. You know, generally I just trust my ability to outgun somebody. Mm -hmm. But it really does. It, it, it makes an interesting change of pace, and I appreciated that. That makes me happy to hear. Like it was definitely the toughest thing to iterate on for the entire mode because it was it it made the mode honestly. It's it's just you know, it's doubles with a twist, and the twist is the is the drama. It's like the hook, right? And if it was, mm -hmm. 
if it was mistuned, I really feel like it might have collapsed the entire event. <laughs> right. Sure. And, and like, yeah, it doubles with this thing that we don't like. <laughs> like, can we just have doubles? Uh, yeah, honestly, like, it, it's it's tough because like, I definitely set out from the get go being like, you know, this is a once a year thing. Like, man, like it has to hit that sweet spot. And I'm actually worried. People are like, "Dude, put it in the rotators. What are you doing?" Like, <laughs> I'm like, "Oh, god damn it!" Like, uh, not my call though. Like, the live team, I think ultimately will figure out. Like, you know, do we do we save it for a special special thing, or do we like, you know, we just mix it up? Like, I, I really don't know. It's it, an open question. Tur- turn the buff green, and you're, <laughs> and it's St. Patrick's. St. Patrick's. Right That's, there you go. That's, right. <laughs> That's all you gotta do. Well, I think uh, that I'll, I'll give you that one for free. One Everybody the, shoots crooked. One of the things that I think people are um, concerned with is that they're going to get to the end of this week-long event, and in a loot-based game where getting, you know, the loot is the goal is one of the goals. They're going to get to the end of this week pretty soon. Here, come, you know, we're not too far oh, yeah. away, and they're not going to oh, have yeah. their ghosts. Um, they're not going to have their shaders, and you know, yeah. that's that's that's. Striking a balance, it's it's really hard. And if there's anything you take back from the this com- community podcast is that, you know, they people want to like with these with these community events, they want to feel like the love, even if I'm dismantling yeah. half the crap, right? Even even uh-huh. if I get to just you know, there's give me the give me the love, make it rain. Uh, when I think of Valentine's Day, I think of candy and hearts and loves and kisses and sex. So, so these are I, things I find it crippling loneliness is more the current. <laughs> Do continue. Yeah. But anyway. Parse meta. So, yeah, so that's so that's, yeah. that's 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 the that's the thing that I I feel when I feel of the, I think of a Valentine's Day. Oh yeah. And uh so um you know I don't know if it's a, a dial that you turn over there in 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 in, 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 <laughs> I know, right? in Bungie yeah. Land. I think it's more than that. But um, these type of live events really need to engage the community with more um, access to the the loot. And e- even if that means that it's spare racing league type drops, I think that's one of the things that made people really happy about playing and racing yeah. that. So no, I agree. Like just to be clear, the the design intent from the get-go was that you could a player should be able to finish the event in roughly 20-ish ma- matches. If we have players that feel like there's aspects of the reward that they can't acquire past 20 matches, definitely past 30 matches, and it feels like you haven't finished the event, the only case that I'm like willing to basically can like, you know say tough luck on is to get rolling an exact 320 and even that is probably suspicious like the the vent was designed with like the idea that like the problems that we'd have is people saying that's it it's over and it's like yeah you did it it was a week you finished you should feel comfortable like you finished it the the issue with the with the drop rates on the ghost making players feel like they can't finish the event like the vent is like you know like just the scratch that you can't itch i consider that un, unintended Mm-hmm. But also, like, like, I'm not, I'm, I'm like, it could have gone much worse. Like that, like, when people finish the bounties and they're like, "There's no daily bounties," I was like, "Yeah, you don't have to log in every day, man, and we don't have to tune the rewards to basically take into account that dailies, daily things exist." Was like super intended, and it, it really didn't bother me that the community was like, "Hey." what the hell we finished i'm like i know it's a week you only you don't need to log on you can you can finish it in two nights and it's over if you want to do more more dudes you know you roll it on more characters like almost as an experiment like not every event needs to have that philosophy but this one in particular it was hoping it would do that and the ghost drop rate being this kind of like unfinishable aspect like i feel like i feel like it was outside outside the bound and i apologize for it that's that's definitely on on me like i was i'm responsible for the event if that's that feels like if it like say if it's outside if if it's intended design like I take responsibility for yeah. that yeah and I think I think what we're we're you know you know what we're looking at is um, how does this how does this experience influence you know future projects moving forward and when they're designing it and building it um, what the community really wants to see is um, 
you know, they want to be in the chat with their friends and go, hey, you got it, you know, or not. Um, but ultimately, in, in, in these fun events, getting cool stuff is, is what makes it fun. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to always be like super high end stuff. So when you're, when you're decrypting those engrams or you're yeah. getting those ghost shells and stuff, it, um, it matters. It matters to people that are playing. And, um, but yeah, the, the, the Crimson Days playlist, I felt really ignited a, a part of me that really is thinking about what is possible in PVP to bring the community together and more engaged. And I kept mm -hmm. thinking about other playlists like um, Gun Game and, you know, Capture the Flag and things that were fun type events, faction type wars and things that would engage the community in different ways, not just have some big overall themed event like you know, the Valentine's day where you put a lot of time and resources into decorating the tower, but let's say a faction war for a week, you know, and something that maybe doesn't take as many resources, but is more, um, involves more of the community in ex access to more of the faction that you subscribe to armor and guns during that time. I mean, they're just ideas like this that give us ways that we can connect with each other within PvP and make it um, fun and engaging. It doesn't always have to be a redesign of the play space. No, no, for sure. I'm with you there. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. The possibility space, it's like one of, the, one of the real pleasures of working on the IP and, you know, with, you know, a highly engaged community is that those opportunities exist. We're like, we're really not as designers that bullied into like here's like the the things that you can make for destiny it's like make this tiny like build the factory line it's like not like that at all like there's a wide spectrum between like quirky and not quirky at all or competitive or not competitive at all like or you know just just for fun like it i'm with you man and like the, the like the lessons are being heard loud and clear yeah, like of course you know the the um, you know, Emmy, the head of the live team and, you know, Steve Cotton on competitive, like, like some of the best conversations we've had recently are like, you know, what are we observing? And like, what does it say to the opportunities that are on the table? Like, you know, the, it's crazy. Like the, just, I, I could, I mean, the, there's, there's no poverty of design that would make for like just really compelling experiences for the community. Like, the bottleneck is what's right for the moment. Like, like you brought up CTF, like CTF, like it'd be really hard to build an event around because I feel like CTF, if we built it, like people would be like, you know, why are you taking it away? Weekly and, like, right. you know, like, you know, it's like, it's like, well, man, well, if this is, if this is a mainline experience, like what, how do we build an event around it? What themes does this speak to? Like, do we roll CTF out with some other type of experience that had like, where they dovetail together? Like, like how, how, like, what are the bundles of things that we can all hit at once and it makes sense as a group? At the same time, though? At the same time, though, couldn't it be something that if you guys build something that is a mainstay during the live team events, wouldn't it be great, though, that it did return and added more content to the base game? We can. It's just the nature, the nature of the event is like, you know, for example, you know, if we built, if we built CTF, I'm thinking hypothetically, literally mm -hmm. hypothetically. Uh, this isn't like a hint. My uh, my brain would be like, "Oh man, we should debut that in Iron Banner because that sounds like a good vehicle." And if we're gonna if we're gonna debut CTF in Iron Banner, we should we should think of like you know what the gear set for that for that Iron Banner is gonna be. Mm -hmm. If we're like, "Oh, but wait, what if we built an entire new CTF event?" I'm like, "Well, what's what can we build around CTF?" that makes so much more sense than Iron Banner that like it really justifies us making a thing out of it. Like what is what does that experience look like? And then, you know, the 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 that design exercise is actually really fun and 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 complex. Like you really mm -hmm. have to think like, you know, are we building an event for, you know, event sake sake of are we making, you know, are we making noise where it's justified? And like often we look at that as players. We're basically like you know, is this something that really feels like its own thing enough? Um, like elimination and 
trials were built with each other in mind and dovetailed in a really special way. And, you know, on top of that, we have to think about our ecosystem. Like, you know, when Iron Banner comes back, the fact that like, if things, do, if things aren't time limited over the course of the franchise, you can get a lot of like crazy bloat where it feels like, you know, there's always something happened, but because of that, it's like over, over familiar and nothing like it isn't special. Like that was mm-hmm. one of the challenges with SRL. A lot of the conversations are like, what's the right cadence? Like what's the right uptime? Like if people are playing this, what, what is that the expense of? How does that, how does that influence the investment game? Because if this is coming back aggressively, have players already learned that the experience is already associated with a certain degree of like rewards and those rewards are gone. Like, it's easier for Crimson doubles because hypothetically, if we just throw in a rotator or whatever, it's back. That's it's it's fun for that week. But like other experiences, like the event, the rewards, and the, you know the the gameplay itself are built so much with each other in mind that like divorcing them and way like way like splitting them up can get really complicated. Sure, they're they're complete packages, and what you're saying is taking parts of them and putting them into the game makes for an incoherent experience from the design it could, perspective. It could. Heck. Yeah, uh, the the problem though, like SLRL, uh, I think a lot of people felt three weeks was too long for SRL, but yeah. um, I'd say there's a very strong feeling in the community that SRL is going to return at some point. I mean, not, not make even though that you guys have said nothing about it returning, like zero this, from Bungie. This is a, this is a classic example. Like, I actually don't know. <laughs> I haven't asked. There's a bunch yeah. of people, like you know, guys that killed it on that. You know, the, the, that was their thing. That was just like, I'm sure if they, if I asked them, they'd be like, oh man, we haven't brought, you know, like, you know, we weren't in that meeting. You weren't on that email thread. I'm like, yeah, I guess you're right. Um, <laughs> I'm guessing at some point, but like all those other questions are like super valid. I'm certain that like there is, there, 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 there haven't, I'd be shocked if they're like, we know exactly the right cadence for our community for that experience and the reward plan. I'm like sure. certain that like there's at least one of those pieces. They're like, well, we need to figure out this other thing before we start thinking about that. Like, it's one of the reasons I have so much respect for those dudes. For sure. Yeah. Well, either way, we as a community are ready for anything and everything. <laughs> awesome. You know, like if there is something yeah. that you guys have been thinking about and you tell us, like the community is ready to rip it apart and devour every piece. Uh, that's one of the reasons I was hyped for. Because we love, update, we man. love the game. You know. Yeah, this weekly update was huge. It yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's it's been it's been fun to um, it's been fun to. I guess I'm gonna be I'm I'm being polite, but it's been fun to guess what's coming next, and it's really nice to have a roadmap of content. Um, I'm not gonna ask you what's coming ahead, but um, as far as the live team um, PVP Crimson Days experience, um, our are you taking? Uh, I guess Tefty brought it up a little bit, but are we going to see it again? Uh, are we going to see it or um, Sparrow Racing League again? Like, uh, is that something that refreshes itself, or are you not able to comment on that? I mean, two answers: A, technically not able to comment; B, I really don't know. Like, I, okay. I just assumed like that we when we build it, there was going to be a conversation well after the fact of like. You know what makes more sense? Like, I mean, may, maybe next year we do something totally different, but we name the event the same name and spirit, and it's like a totally different thing. Or we're like, oh man, people like that mode. We should just toss it in the rotators. Every like, those conversations haven't happened, and like, for sure, we're gonna keep it as a surprise because it would totally suck if we were like, oh man, here's the, here's the date. Like, expect it to come back this time. Like, even if we had the date, that'd be way less cool. Um, but yeah, in both cases, SRL and Crimson Days, like, I've I've literally have have no knowledge as to when or possibly if they come back and in what co- incarnation like i mean it's <laughs> it's kind of cool i'm like i'm dead serious to you guys it's like you know often like so other circumstances change and they're like holy crap let's dump a bunch of money in this other thing and when we bring it back it's gonna be twice as cool as anyone ever expected like and other times it's the reverse they're like you know like let's let's let that moment like live let's let, like you know, it doesn't, does it need to come back? We could spend those resources to do a St. Patrick's thing because somebody's pitching a St. Patrick's thing. So maybe, maybe we skip Crimson this year and do something else that's totally nuts. And that, you know, it's, it's not my specialty. Like, you know, I just, I just work on making the thing as good once they call the play. Like, um, 
you know, I'm really glad at Bungie though that we have people that think about this stuff 24/7, and I'm sure like if I talk to them right now, they'd be like, "Yeah, man, like check out all the all the all the things that we'd have to take into consideration before we make that call." And I'd be like, "Oh my God, you're <laughs> Jesus." We'll definitely be needing a keg stand emote for St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of branching off uh, this conversation a little bit. If and when any of these events return or new events surface. Uh, I just want to nod to what, correct me if I'm wrong, the very first event you guys ever did was that those Queen's uh, Queen's Wrath thing. Yeah, the Queen's Wrath. And one of the greatest things about that is that there was a capstone reward that said, hey, you completed it, good job, here is a sniper rifle called the Supremacy. And the thing about that capstone reward is that, A, it it wasn't game-breaking, but B, I didn't get one, and I've always felt like I missed (laughs) out. Yeah. So yeah. if you have that capstone reward that nods to that event, that anytime I see that gun, when I see M Tash using that in his videos, I'm like, it just it grinds my gears. I'm like, why, why, why did I not do that? No, I hear you. you know I mean, it really yeah. speaks to um, Jason Jones. Recently, has been having a, he's been speaking a lot on design off ramps and making players feel like there's a more formal completion when an experience comes into the end, and making sure that we like celebrate that properly and on one hand not make players that didn't do that feel like it's game breaking they're like man if i didn't have like now i've missed it forever but on the other hand like having a more formal exclamation point or period to the sentence like definitely one of my regrets for crimson days is like I was trying to do that with like the final big bounty that pays out like you know the emote bag and you know the nightfall reward but it didn't quite hit the thing that I was hoping for that feels like, no, you did it. Like you're, you're, mm-hmm. you're good. Like the supremacy is a great example of, uh, you know, a capstone, like a really, like a true capstone that feels like you, you, you dunk the experience and you're ready to move on. So I, yeah. And I think that that's a, I think that that kind of concept that is hard for some players to understand is that the big picture has to be, is is looked at as to where a player accesses content and 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 is able to get it and then come back to it at another time um it's it when we're looking at it in the scope of like timed content and um what players see and when um i think that that what they showed us today in the roadmap in a in a kind of an idea and that's what we're going to start getting into next is um as the roadmap looks out and what it, and we're going to start making wild guesses of what that's going to look like. So, um, but, uh, like what is that, what is that roadmap? How does that apply to us? And, um, where are we going to see other cool ideas and content like Crimson Days fitting into that? Um, but you know, it's, it's super, it's super exciting and inspiring to meet people who work for Bungie, who, you know, put their heart and soul into it and, um, you know, are there working every day on the game that we play. And we really, truly appreciate the um, time and effort you put in every day to make the game great. And um, I know we all, you know, from speaking for the podcast guys, we really very much appreciate yeah. the work you do. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Thanks, man. It really, I really appreciate it. And, you know, not just to throw one back, but it's like, you know, a lot of this stuff's possible because we have a great community. There's a lot of things that we wouldn't even consider because we're like, we'd be like, people have moved on. Like, that's not, people wouldn't be excited about that because they're not, like, you know, without, it's like, without an audience, it really doesn't matter what you do on the stage, right? <laughs> you, you can recite some pretty cool. nice Shakespeare if, if everyone's looking at their phones and there's five <laughs> dudes in the freaking crowd. Like, uh, no, it's just, it's one of the reasons I, I stay on the Reddit and I, tr- and I try to stay in touch because it's just like, you know, it, it gives my day, it gives my days more substance when I know, you know, the, the faces and feelings of the people that, you know, the work I do have, has consequences on. And mm-hmm. uh, I, was, I was talking to Triple Rec, I was last night, I was like, I'm, I'm much more fearful of indifference than salt. People are like, oh man, so much salt. And I'm like, salt means people care. Like, there's a handful of products in my entire life that I would consider going on a forum and expressing a strong opinion about. And like, it doesn't matter how bad Delta could screw up my like flying experience. 
I'm not going to go on and complain on Delta forums being like, you guys need to fix your airline. Yeah, he's like, got to fix I, your PVP experience. I know, right? It's awful like, up here. <laughs> I know, right? It just, I don't yeah. like, that's the thing. My phone doesn't work quite the way I want it to do. If, if, if my computer doesn't quite work the way I want to do, like a lot of that stuff just rolls off my back. But when my game just doesn't perform the way I want to do, or it's like making it harder for me to hang out with my friends, like, I get why that's super personal and like, yeah, I go to work and I'm like, man, we need to do, we need to find a way to do better. It doesn't matter how hard the problems are, the technical difficulties, the resources, like, you know, it just, Ten hours. I just hope, I just hope that that shows off in, like in Crimson, like Crimson has its flaws, but like, it's definitely like 10 hours in Crimson, no ghost. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that stuff kills me, man. Like it's crushing you know. me. It's a terrible yeah, I think you're, yeah, you're hitting the nail on the head. I think yeah. the, the Destiny community is definitely passionate. I think that there are reasons for that. And I can't speak for everybody, but personally, yeah, I, I can point at things in the PvP experience that I wish were different. But uh, And I know that you're not individually responsible for the PvP experience, but you're a part of it. Uh, so to you and to all the guys there, the reason that I'm passionate about it is because, quite frankly, Destiny, the PvP just plays so good. Like the mechanics. Yeah, the There's game, no shooter yeah. out there to me that feels as rewarding because of the amount of freedom you have with things like character movement and even things like uh, combining various uh, armor pieces to create a new play style. The games don't give you that kind of freedom, you know, not all games can do that, and you guys have accomplished something that's pretty incredible. So we want to see it perfected. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Thanks again, Leif. I, I know I know that you uh, you had had to bounce out of here, but um, we want really appreciate you jumping on the podcast. Absolutely, absolutely, man. Uh, I'm yeah, gonna hang out you. with my wife. I really really liked having a chat with you guys. Um, maybe I'll come back soon. Maybe I'll drop another uh, you know experience down the road, and we can have a chat about it. Like. Huh. Tell us when you're when you're taking out damage over time the crucible. So, oh, that'd be amazing. Man. So <laughs> when are so when are so when are so when are roughly are we uh, going to be scheduling that podcast reappearance? In? Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. Mm-hmm. I just I make the stuff and we figure oh. out what boat it ships on later. <laughs> okay, I get it. All right, thanks again, Life. Really appreciate it, man. All right, later, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Right, nice you. meeting you. Thank you, man. Be well. It's awesome to talk to guys from Bungie and see how passionate they are about the project they're working on. It makes it, it gives you. It makes you feel hopeful for the future, you know. Like you, no matter how salty you were going into a conversation with a bungee guy, you always come out feeling like, hell yeah, well, <laughs> like I'm the, I'm think, on board. I right? think something that people don't understand in chat because they're, I mean, he's a he's a really smart guy, and he's talking really? at a level of game development that is above the heads. And I'm sorry, but there's a lot of people in chat that just he was talking right over their head, and I'm not calling you stupid. <laughs> But some of the comments that you guys were making in the chat just confirms that you weren't listening. Like he is a and and I'm I, I can you can flame me all you want, but the reality is is that I'm not an apologist for Bungie. You know me. I'm 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 demanding a great game just like you guys are. But I can also have an intellectual conversation with a man who's passionate about his job and not yeah. call and not you know, call him out for, for, for what you feel is like a personal assault on your livelihood. He is doing what he believes is the best thing for this game. We are informing him through an intellectual process of a conversation. Just relax. We're not going to sit here and berate a man who is on after hours on his work time at, at home time is hanging out with us and talking about a video game that he spends all day working on. If you want to be part of the solution, speak in a way that is clear, articulate, and doesn't and doesn't cause people to turn off. So all the shit that you guys are talking in chat, it means nothing to me, because you're going to be when you're talking to somebody who does it for a living, you can you can form an articulate conversation and you can have a, a good thing to say. Then then I'm going to listen to you. So if I ignored your comment in chat or you got timed out, I'm talking to you. That's anyway. the fucking Pope hammer right there. It's, it's whatever, man. Like I like claw. I love our I love our community, but sometimes they act like just there's just immature, and we can we can hold his feet to the fire. We asked good questions, we asked things that were in his wheelhouse, and we and we got some answers on stuff, and we got some ideas of what it's like to do playlist design. Really appreciate him coming on, and I hope we can get more bungee guys in here. 
Yeah. My impression is that a lot of the salt that the Crimson Days event is getting was because of the lack of knowledge of future content, right? The That's lack right. of knowledge about PVE yeah. content. Mm-hmm. Just with the knowledge yeah. that we got today about future content coming in spring, coming in you know later in the year than Destiny 2 coming next year, I feel like that eases some of the pressure on the live team guys to be the sole carriers of the torch of new content for Destiny. Mm, that's right. And now as a community, we could relax, look at the live content and be like, okay, this is just the stuff that we get in between the big stuff and now we know the big stuff is coming too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, today was a big day for Bungie. It was a big day. You know, three paragraphs worth, worth of the weekly update or it's really three sentences. Three sentences. It's, it's like really. three sentences. Really. Of this <laughs> they made update. all the difference in the world. They that really one did. paragraph made I felt like a collective community right. like <sighs> Yeah. Definitely. Do you agree? Breath of fresh air. Like it felt like an yeah. exhale oh, oh. finally. Oh, yeah. and also as content creators, it's a breath of fresh air too, because yes. that's. I mean, if we're if we're being truthful, Absolutely. a part of that is livelihood, and and you know, so to to know that there's fresh stuff on the horizon is a breath of fresh air for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but if you're filling in the like, gaps with live team, that's what the live team I think should be doing, not yeah. carrying the game on their shoulders. Yeah, exactly. So uh, the, the main thing, that, like the takeaway from that sentence is just feeling that the game that we love to play and that we love to experience, that we want more of, is getting more of what it has right now. Yeah. With just more, you know, like a, the weapon refresh and so on and so forth. Like we get to experience more nooks and crannies of this game that we put thousands of hours into. And that is enough of a, like a, a fresh air feeling to be, to be excited over it. You know, obviously we want Destiny 2 and like the new new. You know, whatever that is, new everything. But just to be able to play this game and still have more stuff to do in it is exciting from a player perspective. So, Destiny 2 getting delayed to me was, it wasn't so concerning that it was getting delayed. It was the fact that the lack of content for that long a time, that's what was really concerning to me. So mm-hmm. now to see that gap get filled in is really a, it's, it's a sigh of relief as far as I'm concerned. It also, pretty- also means that we'll probably see something at E3. Uh, yeah. yeah, this year. Can too, we try so. to can we try to put dates to this stuff? I know that's really hard, but let's like like let's April. take a look at it. And it says prior to the holiday break, we mentioned a second larger update slated for spring. What does that mean? We're not farmers. We're not farmers here. What is the <laughs> what does that mean to us? I'm, April, I'm with Tefty. I think April. Is okay. April. All right. Yeah. Are we all agree? Uh, true. Yeah, I was gonna say late April. It's late gonna April. be the bunny surprise. Easter Easter bunny surprise. All right. All right. So we <laughs> then got... I would guess I would guess September for the next one. Yeah, that's my thought too. Probably. Okay, so yeah, and then right. so and then so September. Okay. Yeah. Now what are now let's say like the April content release, what is it gonna have in it? Uh hold, so something that was very interesting. They said a significant light level increase. Right. Mm-hmm. So right. not just like three thirty. Like I think it's gonna be Maybe 360, 370 or something like that. I don't know. Like they said significant. And so it's like 10 around points. 363. 363? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so nice. Three, 369. No, it's going to be uh, 343. 343. Yeah, it's going to be 343. Oh, oh, nice. Nailed it. No. <laughs> 343. All right. But honestly, like 10, 10 point difference is nothing. Right. We've all seen it. Like it, there's true. literally yeah. nothing, no difference. Especially the other thing that implies though, working on like a five point difference for months now. People hit like right. three fifteen and can't get to three twenty. You know. Like, yeah, and and you don't really experience much of a difference with it either way. No. The other thing that's interesting that implies is that, um, you know, there's going to be a way to reach it, and whether or not that means King's Fall gets a refresh, or previous raids gets a refresh. Which I'm very I love excited. I updated see. Vault of Glass, dude. I've always I I don't like oh. PVE, but I could play Vault of Glass any day. Yeah, it would be awesome. I would love to see, uh, I would love to see drops happening. Even if it was, even if it was the same armor or weapons with um with uh with the new light level, that'd be great. Obviously, primaries with elementals would be a but problem. A color so refresh like that. they did with Trials of Osiris. That'd be great. Love it. I want some Trials of Osiris. Sidearm, sword. Yeah, I want to. Oh, I want to. Yeah. I want to access to the Iron Banner sidearm or something. <laughs> you know, like I, I've been. I've been. I've been really wanting that. Um. So. So then, what are we looking at September? What's that release? I think the big question people have is, um, is it going to include a raid? 
But I, don't I think, think I think that's the question yeah. that we're seeing for the spring one as well. Mm-hmm. Like I the second larger the update. One. If there's a significant light increase, I don't want to be playing King's Fall to be getting that significant light increase. I I want it to be at new in-game content. They did a light increase with uh, Prison Elders, though. Yeah, or House they Wolves. did, but there was a new activity. There was, like, yeah. I think maybe. September is going to be a raid. I think it'll be a Taking King really? style event. Yeah, I mean, the way, mm, just the way they word it, the team is focused on delivering a large expansion later this year. Large expansion to me has the feel of King's Fall. Mm-hmm. Okay. Expansion has the feel of Take House King. of Wolves or. Um, uh, dark below. Dark Large below. expansion means taking king. Okay. So, I would like to think that, and I would be thrilled if there really was a raid. Yeah, <laughs> like my like little Teft, that's a kid, is like, oh my god, that's amazing! I want to do that's gonna be amazing. But adult Teft right now is like they got seven hundred people, most of them focusing on Destiny Two. Mm-hmm. Is that even realistic to expect that they're gonna is. pump out? I think they raid. got multiple teams working on raids at, at the same time, and I think they had a raid planned for this year. Yeah? Yeah. A raid or two, I would say, they, they had planned he, for this here's year. Here's my thought. Here's my thought. Like, that raid that may or may not have been planned for this year or Destiny 2, if that gets taken out and put into a content drop, then they're missing a raid for that future release. You know what I mean? They have to rebuild that content. Okay, okay, so imagine a picture where the guys who made Dark Below, as soon as they finished that and released it, started working on another raid. I don't think they made the Taken King, did they? Don't know. I think that's Wait, two well, separate what, teams. What was the question? Based, Sorry, I was based on our at... conversation with Luke Smith when the Taken King came out, I feel like that's two different teams. I think yeah, that no, Luke the, Smith, the... when he finished the Taken King, started working on Destiny 2. Based on our conference, and this is all just me pulling pulling words out of Luke Smith's mouth that he did not say. This is just what I got the feeling of from what he said, was that he was going on to work on Destiny 2, and that the the Dark Below team was working on more content, another raid for Destiny. That's kind of the feeling I have. Mm. It's Mm. complete speculation. Yeah, well, everything at this point is, you know. I I think they gave us a good idea of, like, the direction we're going, and we're going to be able to you know, salivate over details as they come out. When do you think that they're going to start like giving us like, uh, you know, maybe artwork from whatever content we're going to be getting for the spring, Mm -hmm. March, March next month. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh God. I hope, uh, (laughs) I hope they continue along the trajectory that they did with, um, the previous DLCs where it wasn't just, I mean, yeah, they really start work, but, they had the computer, the community involved pretty heavily with events, um, the Twitch mm-hmm. live streams, yep. Yep. and that to me fueled my hype at exponential levels. So yeah, I feel they, like they gave away too much with the Taken King too early, though. We knew so much about that at the beginning of summer at E3, and then that excitement had to kind of sustain itself all the way through summer. I didn't feel that way. I no? I had I maintained that excitement, but I had a busy summer. I was pretty hyped. Factor. I was pretty hyped throughout the summer. Like my, I, I was dreaming about getting an Omelon scout rifle with the liquid <laughs> and all that. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, or the snipers. Like oh, yeah. I was. I hear so the excited I hear the hung that. jury has a really good role on it. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't gotten that already. this week. This week you probably have like another three months. You got to get to the it. tower. It's yeah. gonna refresh soon. It's gonna get refreshed, baby. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I was I was excited about it prior. I mean, but I don't know. You know, different strokes, right? Mm. Speaking yeah. of refresh, I should probably go buy my. Uh, weapon packages. Just th- thanks for that. <laughs> you need to set a reminder on your phone. I usually do it right when I <laughs> make the video, but I forgot this week. <laughs> well, um, so are we? Um, we're still going through the um, the weekly update, or where do you guys want to go from here? Because I know we were on a what roll, and I wanted to talk to uh, we wanted to talk to True Vanguard about you know. St- oh, um, you know. Go ahead. Hold up! Before you do that, there's one more speculation. When do you think Destiny 2 or the sequel drops? Mm. Dun, First dun, quarter, dun. second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. Mm. As this is what, what this sets up is a chance for them to move it off of September. And I think, honestly, the September release dates uh, was eventually going to be a problem for them because of it being Activision with right. Call of Duty in no. November. You know? I, I think, I mean, 
Hmm. So you're saying you think we'll see Destiny 2 in September of 2017? No, I'm or, asking when do you think? And I don't think it's going to be September. I think I don't I, think, I don't think it will I think be. quarter 3 and 4 are bad months for Activision to drop another it's bad title months. like Destiny. It's bad months in general. Look what happened this past year, like in November. Or was it November? I think it was November. Where it was just like so many games came out and there were so many games that were just buried under yeah. all that stuff. Destiny uh, sold really well though. In yeah, September. I mean, yeah, no, it did. It was it was Destiny's, it was right at the yeah. beginning of that. Because it was right it was. At the it it beat the rush. Like November yeah. were the it was the tough month, I felt like. Like huge games mm-hmm. came out and really good games and just got completely covered. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think? Quarter March. one, quarter two? March. I would like to see it on January 1st. <laughs> January 1st? <laughs> at uh, day, please, Bungie. At uh, day. one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> Pacific time, please. It's going to uh, be great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I think they're going to probably go for a i don't think they're gonna do the november drops i think they're gonna go off of that i think we're probably gonna see it earlier like mid-year so between the third and uh, second and third quarter they're not gonna release during the summertime right Mm -hmm. no way so it's either gonna be spring or fall uh, spring i'm hoping spring yeah i i I foresee a spring yeah yeah i think all right i'm with you there Listen, February is a little too close to Christmas. People have emptied their pocketbooks and just now sure. in tax return time in March. I think March, April would be a fantastic yearly refresh time for Destiny. Mm-hmm. I should probably do taxes too in, after, after I go You're buy welcome. these weapons. <laughs> You're welcome. Probably, I need to go buy these weapons first, but yeah, I'll, I'll get on that. All right. <laughs> well, they also talked about, and this is the part that we, you know, we're, bring in um true true vanguard on this but they also talked about how um they had a in the weekly update they talked about the from lars the matchmakers and um sort of the changes that they made to crucible Mm -hmm. but um did you guys have a chance to take a look at damage referee yes how did that how did that Uh, look what did what did uh, you find did, did anyone else in this podcast take a I look at it? I played a little bit of Control, yes. Okay. I played very, so I, very I, minimal. I think I played okay. two matches. I, I didn't played get about, to jump in at all. <laughs> I think I played, I, I played about five hours of it. It felt really good. Um, I, I still think something was weird with like when they you know fixed the connections or something. It, it felt like people that were green bar had lag associated with them like what would normally be a yellow bar is a green bar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that's the way that it definitely felt. Um, but if I knew, if I, if I saw a player, I'm like, oh, this guy is usually kind of laggy. Um, he, he would be laggy, but my shots would absolutely register like the instant that they hit him and I would oh. see his health move. Amazing. Okay. Uh, wow. It's like, no way. That like, it, sounds it, it, it like worked. a dream. <laughs> it, it, it worked. But then, but then in extreme cases, when there was someone who was like on the low end of yellow slash red bar. It would. It was back. It was back to the old old style of it taking you know a long time for stuff to register on them. But the the stuff where there's usually like a little bit of lag, where you'd be like, oh man, that sucks. It uh, that wasn't there anymore. So mm-hmm. damage referee was working for what would be like a good matchmaking. If someone was like, I'm just gonna throw numbers out here. If someone was within like the you know ideal ideal matchmaking range, like I, I'm gonna say like I guess above or, or below 200 ms. Like everything felt solid. If they were above like four, three to four hundred, then it got then it got back to old hat, pretty quick. Interesting. So the extreme cases didn't feel like it changed at all. No, no. extreme cases huh. did not feel like a change. Um, you know the the middle cases definitely I could feel a change there. Hmm. That's really interesting. I had thought damage referee would fix the extreme cases and not the opposite. Uh, there, there were many cases where, like, I, I would, you know, snipe someone in the head. And I'm like, wait, what? I, I landed that snipe, and then I would see, boop, come up a little bit later, or I would kill someone. They would die, and then the damage, or and then like the, the little thing would pop up on the screen and said you killed them. Uh, a lot of throwing knife, uh, like peck, peck at you with my sidearm and throwing knife. I'm like, okay, they're dead. Wait, did they die? And then they'd keel over. It's like, oh, okay, but again. That was only against players that had very extreme cases. Hmm. Yeah. So, 
Hmm. Take that as you will. Yeah. Did they did they include that control is available inside the freelance? Is it called freelance playlist? It's freelance freelance sixty six. Yeah. So control is one of the playable game. I you know, don't. One of the, I don't know. I yeah, just I don't know selected. Either. I just selected control from the normal normal playlist. I, yeah, I have not I played, tried out. Freelance. I played. Uh, I played freelance. So I'm gonna. I'll be able to speak a little bit about that. Nice. Um, I played for about an hour, um, and what I found is that the I got I got I actually got a considerable amount of lag in a few games where it just all of a sudden the connections tanked and it was started off green and then it just went doom 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 and everybody in the entire lobby was um was yellow and red bar by the end of the yeah. match it seemed like the match degraded over time um I'd hmm. say that that wasn't the majority of the cases, but it was definitely, um, it happened in the game. And I'm not sure if it's the focus on that peer to peer connection that would create that. Like, but that being said, I had a really good, um, experience just going freelance. I don't think that objective game modes were that great in there. It just felt like I'm used to running with the team. So it was difficult to, to play an objective game mode, but when it, when it rotated, it's frustrating, right? It's, it's frustrating, mm -hmm. yeah. but it, but yeah. it, at the same time, if that's what you got, if that's the best you got, I honestly would have liked to have seen Crimson Days with matchmaking. I understand the philosophy behind it not being, but I wish it would have had matchmaking in it because I like the idea of being able to jump in there with, um, you know, I, and I bring up Crimson Days because it's, it's essentially a, uh, you could do a no teams version of that in doubles, right? Doubles, uh, freelance. Yep. And the reason why I like it is because you meet people there, man. Like you, some guy, you know, supports you and, you know, puts up a bubble and all of a sudden you find yourself, it's like running the Vanguard strikes. You meet somebody mm -hmm. that, that is a good teammate and all of a sudden you're, you're exchanging, you know, PSN, you know, names and putting them on your friends list and next thing you know you're playing a raid together would have been a perfect opportunity with right. just the two of you you know i bet yeah. a lot of friends would have gotten made that way yeah I, and now and that, I agree with you, that was that, the, the, that was the concept behind like a valentine's day you fall in love with somebody i mean, <laughs> I mean romance bromance or girl romance <laughs> or girl romance, girl, yeah. romance. <laughs> girl crush wednesday Gr girl cr yeah and so i i really think they missed an opportunity to not have matchmaking in something like crimson days but I did see the value of having it in um, in the free for all because the freelance because you see everybody in there is by themselves. So if you run into somebody that's good or that has a similar play style, you send them a message and say, "Hey, let's hook up. Let's go do yeah. something." You know, and it's, it's a good like, way of it, meeting people. To me, it feels like kind of a when I when I just want to play a little bit of Crucible just because it's a nice to go in there and know I'm not going to be set up against a team of six. You know, that's yeah. not fun. Yeah. You know, when you just want to go play a little control for fun to just get crushed by a team of six, just not I fun. I generally don't play sixes, but I, I true story, the last time I queued up in control to play 66 solo, I got paired up against a full team of Bomb Squad kittens. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you got to be good. <laughs> so, oh, man, so I, I know that I'm going to get some mileage, especially once they get some freelance 3v3. I'll get some mileage out of that. I do play a lot of solo you know, I, I do have a number of chunks of time that I do invest in the game are times where I'm with my kid or I'm multitasking. And so I don't I, I intentionally don't want to be in a fire team with other people because I know I'll be a detriment. Yeah. Because my yeah. attention is divided. So I know that I'll get a lot of mileage out of out of freelance three V three and and I will be able to play it in a in a more relaxed sort of a, a, a way. I'll get to try out some new loadouts because I know I'm not going up against a three a team of bomb squad kittens. So, yeah, I think it's a great addition to the game. It's something that I think they needed along for a while. Nice. I'm gonna have to try it out because I haven't tried freelance yet or the new um, uh, damage referee. Yeah. Do you guys want to do some Twitter questions? Yeah. Yeah, I can move to that. All right. Paul Pesagno at Pesagno Paul. That's weird. He flipped it. <laughs> Is anyone in the cast joining at True Vanguard for Fusion Friday on Trials? Hmm. Fusion Friday. Tell us about it. <laughs> Push it for it. What, what is it? Yeah, yeah. Pitch so it. So just, I was just looking at this. Sell it to me. What? Or, what? What? Yeah. what, 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 what <laughs> why? Are, why are we going to want to do this? Yeah. Here's the are thing. We I've been, the cause. 
if have you if you've looked at the recent stats for the trials of Osiris, you will see that um, I think it was literally it was one percent of the player base is using a fusion rifle. One well, not using, getting kills with a fusion <laughs> rifle. That's, should make that distinction. <laughs> so uh, you know, a lot of people have been reminiscing on the good old year one meta days. Back when fusion rifles were fantastic, you know, and, and they are unloved. So I think it would just be it'd be fun to really jack up their their uh, you know their charts and their spreadsheets over there at Bungie when they're reviewing their data for this weekend and trials, and they see this giant spike in fusion rifle use. But uh, I just think it, it would be a fun thing to go up against a full team of guys using their regular primaries, but having things like Telesto and Plan C and the Suzanu and Plan and C, uh, you know, it's vacancy. an underrated weapon. I would love to. I would love uh, honestly. If I got killed by a Plan C, I would just. Like, you gotta go. You. you gotta you. go. Vex and the fusion. Well, hey, we used Vex <laughs> double fusion Let's in, go. Uh, in trials a couple of weeks ago. We did that. How did that work out for you? It didn't. <laughs> okay. It didn't. The Plan C rips though. I mean, the the key to that gun is that when you swap to it, it fires almost immediately. If you don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, you could really shock, like, those shotgunners that are just charging at you, and you got, like, a slow-firing scout rifle. You know you're fucked, and then you just switch that plan C and blow them out of the sky. That really surprises people. It's a fun gun to use. It's awesome. All right, Gav, so who's competing in it? Who's going to do it? Who's going to take up the True Vanguard Fusion Friday Challenge? Challenge Fusion Friday. Um... I will, I will, I will try to, to to learn how to use a fusion rifle. I'm going to tell you right now that I couldn't hit the broadside of a barn with one. Well, nobody can. The things spray all over the place. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take on the challenge, Vanguard. Yeah, I'm gonna try it. <laughs> I love you. Patrick. I'll pass. I'll pass. Oh, <laughs> not the, no climb. love. If yeah, I I'm play, sure. if I play trials on Friday, I will. I'll take up the challenge. I don't know if I'm going to play on Friday. <laughs> I'm not playing on Friday, but I'll take it up on Saturday. How about that? All right. I just, for me, I know that when I pl- whenever I play on Fridays, it's with the same people, and it's it's not when I'm doing carries for people, so I don't feel guilty about derping around. I'm playing with KJ Hovey and the Manigator, and these mm-hmm. guys love to play derpy, so I know we'll have a good time. We'll pull out our nice. fusion rifles. Yeah, we'll, sure. We may get pooped on, but you know we'll have a good time doing it. All right, Gavin... Riz Bridger at Gavris. Are gaming accessories worth buying, i.e. scuff, elite pads, gaming glasses, etc.? And will <laughs> DestinyNews.net ever review them? I think he's talking about playing a Destiny. Will playing a Destiny ever review them? Um, what do you guys think about gaming accessories? Scuff, elite pads, gaming glasses, all that stuff. Mon- gaming monitors. Um, uh, not necessarily gaming monitors, but playing on a monitor does have a very noticeable... That, if you ever wanted to buy one thing, that'll probably make you a better player assuming you know you're competent at things a gaming monitor <laughs> is probably going to be the best bet i will caveat the, that statement by saying it's not what the brand of the monitor is yeah. it's about the lag the input lag the on the display latency, yeah. it doesn't matter also, if it's branded as a gaming monitor or if it's branded as a dell desktop monitor you want to with the stat you want to know is the the delay on the screen, the, the time, time it takes, the response. Well, there's the response time of the of the LCDs, but there's also a processing delay yeah. from the HDMI going into the monitor and the actual image being displayed on the screen. Yeah. So you you want it's a response time. You want like a it's one to two response time. response time. Hmm? Respo- response time is a measure of the pixels response time, but okay, there's so- also a processing time before that. Okay. So we want the total okay. time. Okay, yep. so the milliseconds the total time, the total time the from the story. HDMI signal hitting the, the the monitor to it showing up on your screen. Right. The total Look time. at the stats that are on a on a gaming monitor, go find a cheaper one somewhere else probably. So yeah, you're not right. paying, you know, too much money for it. But gaming monitor, in quotation marks, yes. Um scuff controllers, uh, elite controllers <sighs> using those to improve your game. It's not going to help everyone. They it they make it significantly cannot. easy to do certain things. I yes. think uh, like I, jumping I, and shooting at the same time. I can tell you that I can I can definitely attest to two things: control freaks and um, a scuff gaming controller or a elite controller. They when they work properly, 
because I've been having some issues with mine and I think it's a programming issue where there's ghost movements, but um, these help out ex a lot. And it's simply put because your thumbs never your thumbs never come off of the movement, your torso and your body movement and upper body movement. So when you press the jump button in the air, you're in the air and still turning and aiming at the target. There is right. a lot of movement in first person shooters that is extremely important to staying alive and, and, and putting your shots on target. And one of the one of the reasons why people in chat ask me, Pope, you know, how are you so good with the, the doctor of passing? And it, that type, that archetype of gun is about tracking your opponent and putting lots of shots on him, right? Instead of just a few accurate shots. So the, the do, this controller helps me to track an opponent and use that because I can move around and never take my aim off. Yeah. I, you know, being able to shoot and res at the same time, that's valuable in trials. It's great. Being able to block, put up a, um, say, you're, you're, say you're playing salvage and you go up to um, a salvage point, you can throw up the shield of the sword and start defusing the salvage point. So they're shooting rockets at you and you're and you're blocking the rockets with your sword shield and dismantling the 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 salvage point. Or, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do with additional with the scuff controller or a elite controller. On that note, I um if you're if you're cheap, <laughs> you can learn how I have an unpopular I think Holtz already knows this. I have an unpopular yeah, opinion of, of scuff controllers and things of the sort. But if you don't want to use one or you can't afford to use one, you can always claw, and that will allow you to do exactly sure. those same things uh, mm -hmm. if you learn how to At claw the cost uh, properly. Of wrist health. <laughs> I, I, use, I, used, I used to claw a lot. I used to claw a lot, Vanguard, in in um, in, uh, in Xbox, and I had I got I'm an old man, and I got Nintendo wrist right Nintendo thumb. <laughs> From from clawing, and I would I, I would use the top two buttons across the top. You've sp seen a, a Scump play, right? From Optic, how he plays claw, mm -hmm. and I, I, yeah. I tried to mimic that. So the top two went across, and I I got really bad carpal tunnel through my index finger going through my wrist. I used to do a play in Call of Duty. My shit's fine. Yeah, yeah, it looks great, right? <laughs> I, I, I I I think I you're think just it, unhealthy. Right. Could be. <laughs> need some wrist exercises. Uh, yeah, I need no, to. Moving, what, was, what was that? Moving, oh. moving off the controller thing. Okay. Things like gaming. Things gaming like glasses. gaming. I've heard they gaming help glasses. a lot with eye strain. If you it, suffer it, from they, eye strain, I, I have two or three friends that get eye strain really bad from looking at monitors. And um, after they started using gaming glasses, they could you know play for uh, longer periods of time without getting eye strain. Put so, a light source behind your monitor. That also helps tremendously. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at a bright object surrounded by a dark background, that can create a lot of eye strain. Strain. If you just put a, like maybe the you know those little uh, Japanese lights you can buy them at like Home Depot for like five dollars. You throw one of those behind your gaming monitor. It'll help mm -hmm. tremendously with eye strain. Yep. Also, the the monitor itself can contribute to eye strain if there's a type of uh, I think it's type of light or panel that they use, um, you can actually get monitors that are um, that are better for your eyes. And L like the LED, something LED, to do with refresh rates. Yeah. LED monitors. Get, yeah. uh, if, you, if you want a good monitor, IPS displays will not have that eye searing technology that so many others have. But there typically have more input lag. Yeah, but they typically have more input lag. You, you know, once again, pay out the ass and you can get a good one. So yeah, so, so, some gaming accessories worth it. Some yeah. not really... Some definitely no. If you're getting all of them are so your hands expensive. don't sweat. <laughs> right. like deodorant so your hands don't sweat. You got pants on, just wipe your hands off on your pants. You're the room they used to sell controllers with fans in them. Yes, <laughs> all those, those old Mad Cat ones. Oh, yeah, God, those, those, are those, are those were uh, great. I'll, I'll say I have not used the Elite controller or gotten a scuff yet. I want to. Um, so I've just been using basic control. I used to use uh, Control Freaks on the controllers as well. To make it easier switching from Xbox to PS4 and back and forth, mm -hmm. uh, use, but now recently I've just gone basic. I I use Control Freaks on mine, and honestly, the only reason is because I feel like protecting my investment of a scuff and not tearing up my thumbsticks. Yeah, that's um, the other thing about scuffs. You pay two hundred dollars for a PlayStation controller; it's going to wear out just as fast as a PlayStation controller does. Mm -hmm. Yikes! And when you throw them across the room, <laughs> they wear out faster. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, they break? Yeah. No, they just <laughs> really? they just seem to wear out faster. I'm not really sure. Like um, when you're playing Crimson Doubles and you keep getting killed, right? And there's, um, there's a wall all the way across my room and it my controller reaches it. What, what you're saying is send the bill to Bungie for skill-based matchmaking. That's right. <laughs> They should. They, so, should, have so a, they should have insurance for it. And if they had 60 FPS, my eyes wouldn't get strained. I wouldn't need these stupid glasses. Let's sue them. <laughs> exactly. Class action lawsuit, gentlemen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fun, We're on, fun yeah. fact. We're on to you now. Fun Gavin fact. I have Bridget. never thrown a controller in my life until last either. week That's during not a trials. Big... Oh, okay. Until oh, last wow. week. <laughs> and it wasn't so much as a throw as much of it was a fuck it. I'm dropping everything <laughs> and walking out of the room. Oh my god. I like, oh, I, I unloaded into a guy with my sidearm hit every single shot his health still isn't down okay i need to melee him oh god he got a quick res off oh god the melee didn't register i'm done and i just walked away i hadn't even died at that point and i just walked away refilled my coffee came back and i, was I feel like every week when that happens to me on trials yeah it's unhealthy <laughs> it's unhealthy Austin, really unhealthy for my emotional health. <laughs> at AMT210, what do you expect for the spring release? I personally think Old Raid Revamp. I hope it's not an Old Raid Revamp. I hope not, too. No, I really no, don't want to see this. No. I know this is a popular idea. I don't want idea. to be just yeah, that, but I wouldn't mind if it was some awesome stuff and that, you know? Okay, I'll, I'll go with you along on that. But yeah, I want to call cool. new boss loot tables. I think one of the things they saw is that people are loving some of these uh, items that certain bosses are dropping. You see all the rage for the the um, Grass Grass Malik. Malik, you know? And I think they're going to be like, hey, this is, hey, it's, if we're speaking honestly, it's perpetuating gameplay. People are still playing because they're trying to get these things. You saw that for uh, the cloak farms, that people wanted those the cloaks for the Scion Flares. I think you're going to see new loot tables for bosses for special items. That was items. a good addition to the Taken King. It really oh, was. I agree. I that love would that be kind awesome. Of stuff. As long as they increase the damn drop rate, so I can actually farm one effectively. Still, only have one. I finally got one cloak. Whatever. Matt Ellis <laughs> at Matt V Ellis. What form of content would you like to see in the future outside of a raid? I think True Vanguard just answered that question for mm-hmm. us. <laughs> what kind of new stuff would you like to see? Something that they're not doing now. You'd like to see added to future content. Don't we talk about this like every fucking week on the podcast? Yes, so. and we're gonna talk about it again. Okay, Dark Zone and Destiny Patrol. Let's Thank do you. it again. Okay, we want want. yes, I agree. That's okay, it. moving on. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Vengeance at the MQ9 Reaper. I think this guy gets a question in every week. How do you think Trials of Osiris will play with the current special ammo changes? So we kind of got a sneak peek at this with tr- yeah. Crimson Doubles, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah. You guys think it's going to happen? You think we're going to see as much cheating it with the uh, sidearms and yes. Icebreaker? Yes, it's going to be very prevalent. Very. If you're, if you get matched up in that category, in the the higher tier, it's going to be like ninety percent of the matches you're going to see that. Agreed. Mm-hmm. It's. I, I'm you not. Guys, in, change or do you, would you rather have it go back for Trials of Osiris only? Mm, I, I want to. I want to play it before I make that call. Yeah, but yeah. just seeing it in a, in the Crimson Doubles. Um, I liked what it did for the gameplay, or I liked the good things that it did, but I think the bad things that it does for the gameplay is just either really frustrating or just completely detrimental. Like the whole mm-hmm. snowballing thing of, well, I would have loved to be able to use some special ammo to kill this guy that got that has heavy this round, but you know I can't, or you know just this snowballing effect of well they they killed us while we were trying to get special, you know, uh, or just stuff like that. Just it kind of snowballs. Uh, and I think it can be frustrating for a lot of people, too. Yeah. I would honestly love to see some numbers, some figures uh, of what they're looking at at Bungie. I would love to see uh, the correlation between winning round one and winning the entire mm-hmm. match. That's going to be I'd really love it. to see yeah. Yeah, those that would numbers. Be interesting to see. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I, I thought it was very interesting, uh, Leaf, talking about there's no uh, real rubber banding mm-hmm. type of pre- uh, measures that they can put in Destiny. I thought that was... That's right. A really interesting thing to think about in this game mm-hmm. and how they could actually do that. And it is a very difficult spot for them as designers to actually put that in. Like if a team is going just running away with a match, should they should the other opposite team have some sort of measures put in to help give them a, a hand? Honestly, I think that. that's why the revives are so strong right now. Mm-hmm. Which I honestly yeah, don't the care. The revives for. are the rubber band mechanic. 
yeah, yeah. it's it's it seems like uh it seems like the the running through revive and then being able to do your do your do that buff and it just it's a it's it's a little bit too difficult for me to see that being competitive even and and, and i know oh, yeah. Leif was saying that he he wasn't going for competitive but that's what that's what ended up happening and i think that it's um, an inevitability well i mean uh one of the questions in in chat was um is there a reason why um sidearms spawn with ammo do you think that's an oversight or did they want sidearms to spawn with ammo i mean i think that do you think they that was just a, bla- a an oversight i, feel I like think that it. was intentional no that, that that was intentional i mean in the in the reveal stream when we saw the sidearm for the first time they uh, they inspected it they were like yeah this is this perk it always spawns with ammo it's always ready for you I think it was an oversight in them thinking of like right now how, right. how what they're uh, doing to special playlist. ammo and thinking in the future with competitive how much impact that could have. That's right. I, I, I think, think that, I think oversight. they knew it was there. I don't think it was an oversight, but I just think that they were like, okay, th- this is going to be there. People will probably exploit it. It just seems now. it seems like that they put it out to the wild, knowing that there was a an exploit. That M- multiple exploits. Multiple exploits that um, would it cause or give people no other option but to to be competitive, no other option but to utilize that exploit. And I, I, I kind of hate being put in that corner, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I think on the flip yeah. side, though, like the game is evolving and growing as we go. We find these exploits, Spongy fixes them, mm-hmm. and we move mm-hmm. on. It takes a long time. It takes less time than it used to, though. Sure. I mean, we get we get true. updates a lot faster than we used to. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. I'd be happy if they if they made it so that anytime you switch special weapon types, even if you're dead, if you go from a sidearm to a sniper, you lose all your ammo. If you go from mm-hmm. a sniper yeah. to a shot, you lose all your ammo. I think that would fix it. It obviously wouldn't fix you using an icebreaker. And then switching to a different sniper, mm-hmm. but honestly, I'm a little bit more okay with the icebreaker thing because it's causing a lot of players to sacrifice their exotic primary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So and, there yeah. is a give take there, and it's going to encourage in trials, And in trials, they're going to also have to sacrifice some light. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think that's you're you're absolutely right. I've been thinking about that too. Like if they made it so even if you're dead, if you switched uh, switch types, I think that would fix quite a bit. Quite a yep. bit of problems. Yep. And that way, um, that way it doesn't affect sidearms having that perk. You still get exactly. ammo with a yeah, sidearm. Exactly. Right. Just flip that switch, Bungie. Yep, just turn that on. That, sounds, <laughs> yeah, that doesn't, do, 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 that doesn't sound, sound like right. a coding that, thing to me. <laughs> uh, Charlie Fisher at CM Fisher. I know it's less than a month away, but do you think the larger update mentioned in Bungie Weekly Update could be coming on 3-8? March 8th. March? No. 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 All right, there's your answer. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Xmotion ZZ at J Hansen27. A gear step is good, but replayable. What do you mean, Bungie? So I think he's he's asking what that replayable means in the Bungie Weekly update or the this week in Bungie. I just found it interesting because we heard that same word so often used to describe prison elders. Hmm. And I think that with prison of elders, it was the replayability was mostly, it wasn't necessarily in the diversity of the experience itself. It was largely the same, or what room you went into. Mm-hmm. The diversity came from the loot that you were awarded at the end. And that's what kept people coming back. Everyone wanted a perfect role, her benevolence or whatever. You know, and you got to get your yeah. keys. So I think that it's going to be loot-based, mm-hmm. personally. That's why I said the loot table with the bosses yeah. is going to come. I, 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 think it, I think it might be more in line, because, I mean, I think the only part of Prison of Elders that was actually re- replayable in the sense that they were marketing it as it was the level 28 version where it was never the same thing going in. Um, the loot experience, I mean, it was always the same thing. You go down this large hole, big big treasure room, open the loot, okay, cool, got a thing I can maybe re-roll up, doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I, I think we might, we might see something in the same vein as Prison of Elders where there's going to be, you know, content that may not be the same doing an encounter every single time. Like a horde mode. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That'd be nice. I would love to see that in Destiny. I, I think, think that'd be horde mode amazing. I, I think we see that as a POE expansion. Mm-hmm. That'd be Could great. Be. Just like you know with Reach, the firefights. Like yeah. those were really fun. Yeah. Those were fun. Yeah, they were fun. So yeah. It could and all I mean you you could you could set up the modifiers so you can go like 
crazy difficult or just having fun with rockets or something like that. But if they had something like that, that and it had rewards dropped for whatever tiers you reached in terms of how long you were going, what higher rounds. Mm-hmm. Oh, if it worked like Trials of Osiris, where the longer you went, the better the rewards got. It'd be amazing. Like oh, Destiny so Zombies. Awesome. Sweet. Fighting against the Hive Hordes. Now we're oh. talking. Now we got yeah, replayability. Yeah, now. Yeah. Go, please. So if you're in there for like six hours, you get an exotic. Uh, you guarantee I ain't got that kind of I'm a dad. I can't you're be anywhere guaranteed for six hours. You're guaranteed two blues. I'm a guard on this one. I'm a dad. I'm not doing that. Yeah, I'm kidding about the time, but like that's what I'm going to be. That's what I'm saying. Like at what point do they recognize it's enough time to get that high-end loot drop? Amir yeah. rocks at Amir rocks 777. How they should solve the special ammo issue to stop abuse of sidearm. We just talked about this. I think we've got a pretty good answer. I'm moving on. Yeah. Bren Thanks, at Amir. N- N- 5830. Legendary hand cannons. What do you guys think of their place in the meta? They don't have one. They need one. He has Luna and Byron and Akira, the only two that are actually worth a damn. I finally got getting a good roll. It is good. Yeah. I I I, I um, found one in my vault that I had been saving for quite a while, and I finally got frustrated enough that I equipped it. Mm-hmm. Um, and what was your frustration, Patrick? Oh, the, maybe the fact that it never drops, or <laughs> you know, just stuff like that, and the fact that okay, you, there there genuinely there are only two good hand cannons, and it's Byronic Hero and A is Luna. Um, outside of the the main weakness of hand cannons right now is that ammo. Ammo is so damn low on legendary hand cannons. I I agree that the Uferin or Kumatha, which whichever one is the Fatebringer archetype, is a great hand cannon. I have a God Roll one. It only has seven rounds. That's that's not enough for for PvP or PVE yeah, in my really eyes. Um, and so Byrionic Hero is like bare. Min- I think nine is like the bare minimum that you really need to be successful on a legendary type hand cannon. Yeah, I would say one of the biggest good. issues is also the accuracy. Yep, on top of it. that's the other thing. I, I used to love using my vanity. I mean, my very first, we ran out of medals after they introduced the medal, was using the vanity hand cannon. I got a god roll on it. But mm-hmm. now, it just doesn't hit crap. I fire seven rounds, the mag's empty, and I hit maybe one of them. It's just frustrating. Yeah, no, the, the, ac- the yep. it's like ac- accuracy and magazine size are just why. Yep. Why? It feels different than any other. Train of Guard's got a point. It's, it feels different than any other weapon right now. It feels like if you put those crosshairs right on a guy and you pull that trigger, sometimes it just doesn't hit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was That's a lot weird. of the last word. Unless you're using the last word, yeah. That's true. No, no, no. I'm, it happens a lot with me on the last <laughs> oh, word. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, like it's RNG shots. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't like rolling the dice when I'm trying to kill somebody. It, it, and my my Aes Luna has extended mag too, so it's got eleven shots, um, and it's like it, it has like be- some of the best stats that you could have, and it's just inconsistent. Hand cannons in general are just too inconsistent to even consider right now in PvP. Yeah. So it, another Ooh, another there's... frustrating aspect of trying to pick a good legendary primary weapon is that the pool for that is about as small as the pool for decent exotics to use. Yeah, so I agree. You got. You got, you got Mida last word for year two weapons, you get, or for year two exotics. Uh, you got like you know Red Death, Soros is bad juju is kind of viable. Um, Doctrine of Passing is pretty decent. Mm-hmm. It's and, more than just decent. Yeah, no Doctrine of Passing is really good, but then <laughs> no other real weapon out there is readily available. I like- don't talk, like what? About, don't talk about my what? baby like that. Don't put her. Don't, 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 don't put <laughs> baby in a box. Don't put her in a corner. Yeah, she's pretty good, but she, 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 she's, she's really she needs good. friends. Is what I'm trying to say. She doesn't need friends. She's all cooped up in her own she house. Needs friends. She needs friends. Okay, Other she friends. can. She can. She can. She can hang out with the necrochasm. She likes yeah, it. Yeah. She likes necrochasm. Yeah. She likes them when they're it, it's, it's just right, uh, one of the real. For, uh, we're getting really off topic here, oh, but sorry. Um, one of the I, I'm getting really off topic, but I feel like I just. I wanted to make a point at some point during this podcast. Fuck it, I'll make it right now. Um, when I was using Icebreaker during this Crimson Doubles event, that was the main thing that I was trying to do. If, if you go and watch my stream of it, like I was trading out legendary uh, primaries, just trying to find something that I enjoyed okay. on the same level that like I, I enjoy Mida or 
some of these other weapons, and it's just not there. Really? You can't find any legendaries you enjoy? I genuinely, no. Really? Genuinely, I cannot mm. find one that I'm like, I enjoy using yeah. this the, the same way that I loved my W, you know, the same way yeah. um, I, I loved, like, you know, that gun or some of the other ones from year one. It doesn't exist for me right now, and I, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's because it's, en- enjoying it means that it also has to be at least somewhat effective. Yeah, there yeah. are a ton of legendary primaries out there that have an appeal and a lure to them and character to them that makes me want to use them, but I don't like them because they're not effective. Red Spectre. Mm-hmm. So what what makes it effective? Just it's, time to kill. That thing's poop. It, it's, yeah. it's, it's it's a it's a majority of factors. Like a lot of the weapons out there have a fantastic time to kill. You know, Grass Mala. Basically, every legendary out there has a really decent time to kill. It, it comes down to using the weapon, the way it feels, the the actual handling speeds, the reload, a lot of them just feel a hell of a lot you get lower. used to Mita Multi-Tool, everything feels slow after that. It, no, this, this yeah. is true, but then when, like, I use some of my year one, one, one of my only year one weapons that I would have left, I'm like, this this feels right. This feels right. Yeah, I feel that same way about my zombie apocalypse. I don't know about you guys. I'm going to love the zombie pop. Yeah, it's just absolutely <laughs> still have a swarm, yeah. Just love I, it. I got a crazy roll on a Treads Upon Stars, mm-hmm. and I, you know, Vision of Confluence was one of my favorite year one weapons. So I've been getting down and dirty with that thing. I've been loving yeah. that. Oh, Patrick has that. one that I just salivate over every time I see it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's going to be taken Talking about out of guns. Context. Yep. <laughs> but but yeah, like, well, how could that possibly <laughs> be taken out of context? No, I have no idea. But, but know, Pope. the the point is there are some weapons out there that are so close to being good. I think A is Luna, like Grass from Malik, uh, like the PDX forty seven, um, or not the PDX, the uh, the the Suros, uh, Scout Rifle, the forty seven, the fast rate of fire one yep. feels pretty good. DIS, yeah, the DI, uh, DIS forty seven. Is this a problem, uh, or is yeah. this working as intended? Right, because you're trying to make a decision. All right, I I usually use uh, exotic primary. You're pulling off that because you wanted to use an exotic secondary, and now you can't find a, a primary that feels exotic. That kind not of feels necessarily like feels exotic. It, not, it, I'm, I don't want. I don't want a legendary that's an exotic. I, I, I mean, that defeats the purpose of legendary. I'm. I'm saying I. I can't find something that feels right that's a legendary, and the only weapon that does feel anywhere close to right for me. Is something that was you know good in year one, or that was, mm-hmm. in, in, and and look at Mida in year one. There were there was there were a ton of other legendary you know uh, there were some legendary primaries out there, a lot of exotic primaries that you know you could trade in and out. You used Mida in year one because of the speed and the, the speed boosting capabilities of it, the, the just the all around really good multi toolness of the weapon, and now that's still why you use it, isn't it? Huh. Isn't that still why I use it? I still use it because it's the only damn thing that it's actually feels right for me, and yeah. it just happens to be an exotic. Um, mm. Yeah, the, the legend, legendary primaries as a whole, personally for me, just aren't where legendaries should be. Not where, not you know, yeah. where exotics should be judging them, or not where weapons should be looking at exotics, but as legendaries should be, you know, in in the game, it feels like they're down lower. There, there's a there's a tier that they haven't reached yet, mm-hmm. and they they can mm-hmm. go up to that, and then exotics could still maintain their exotic status. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm really enjoying waiting every week for the weapon smith to come with the the packages and to analyze which ones are good and bad. I wish that we had that same level of flexibility within the faction um, guns, mm-hmm. and so that we oh, could yeah. we could go there and run around to our faction and let's say we committed to a faction for the week right that we would get a discount on those guns that are rolled in there but you could still buy the guns from the other factions it would just be more expensive i think that there's ways of making those vendors more engaging because right now i mean for sure why do we go there unless we're just you don't really go after after like the first couple of weeks of a dlc you never really look at them again right yeah not really I don't know. I keep well, going back to the new monarchy one because I want to get a good roll on that sidearm and I want a better antinomy. But uh, have you seen the possible rolls in the antinomy? There's not a hell of a lot that you can get this good. Eh, I just like the gun in general. It feels really good. I use it a lot. I really do. 
The vendor oh, version is pretty good, but mm-hmm. you like those wimpy. Uh, you like those wimpy uh, sniper rifles, though. Dude, they're good. The meta man. <laughs> <laughs> I actually I go got the side side use of the word meta, but I got the sidearm. I don't remember the rules on it, but I want to use it uh, and leveled up because yeah. I, I kind of want to like switch up if I'm going to start using sidearms more often because I'm in the crucible and mm-hmm. and I try hard from time to time. Mm-hmm. I'm never really going to pull out that sidearm. I, I kind of want to get away from the Havoc Pigeon a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Uh, try Havoc Pi- For me, Havoc Pigeon feel is the only sidearm that really feels right. Um, yeah. Just because it's the higher damage model, and then all the stats on the other ones are basically the same. They have like the same, you can get them to the same range cutoff. So mm-hmm. that means that this one will be doing a little bit more range at, or a little more damage at a slightly further range. So that's that's mm-hmm. why I. Enjoy Havoc Pigeon, but for a close up one, if you're using sidearms close up to battle shotgunners and stuff, the other archetype is entirely better, in my opinion. They kill the same number of shots. Hmm. Uh, Joe Arnold, speaking of uh, secondaries, Joe Arnold, thoughts on sniper reticles? What do you prefer? How would you improve them? Give us <laughs> customizable reticle colors. <laughs> The That'd palette, cool. the palette I'll right uh, now is a COD. A la COD, <laughs> but it makes like here's the problem: is that the palette of Destiny is brown, green, blue, this pastel colors, right? They're not all pastels, but they're lighter. Like, and then what do they do? The the freaking reticle is white. <laughs> so the reason why the hockey the hockey ones are so nice is because it's this bright Stark, orange. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Bright, being able to change the reticle to some other color, and I'm colorblind, and I lose that reticle all the time. All the time it's gone, like, into the, the, the ether of space. And when I'm aiming out on um, Burning Shrine, forget it, man. Like, that reticle, you might as well. I mean, I actually, <laughs> when, I, when, when Trials is on Burning Shrine, I put a little piece of tape on my uh, monitor. <laughs> so that I can see the black spot instead of the reticle, I can see the little black dot as to where the reticle should be. That's how that's how lost I get on Burning Shrine. I used to put a small corner of a post-it note just on the direct center of the screen, uh, and that would work pretty well. Incidentally, if you get a gaming monitor, uh, I mean, some mm-hmm. gaming monitors have that feature that you can turn on and off. Yep. You'll put an overlay on your screen of the exact oh, center. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's yep. cheating. Unless it you're is. colorblind. It's totally it's cheating. cheating. How is that cheating? <laughs> How is that cheating? Because you know when you're when you're about to zoom in, you know exactly where your <clears throat> sniper reticle is going to yeah, land. Yeah, it takes a feel out of quickscope. But back to the question of the reticles. Oh my back God. to the questions <laughs> of the reticles. Yeah, I know. All right. I don't want to run away with that. But right. Back to the questions <laughs> of the reticles. For me, the biggest issue is that there are so many good snipers out there that no one uses because the reticles are so garbo. Because what they've done is on a precision rifle – They've given you this giant circle instead of a singular dot. I don't want to see the space around the guy's head. That's not what I want to outline. Mm-hmm. I want to know exactly the, the the point, the location where my bullet is going. And some people argue, yeah, well, some rifles have that sort of, uh, you know, that circle around it in real life. And that's true, you know, sort of those ACOG sights. But those are made for running and gunning both eyes open, and it's not on precision rifles. Precision rifles always have crosshairs. There's always a clear indicator in the middle of the screen where it's going. And that's what I want. Which I, guys I you, agree. Which, I, want, which I want Counter-Strike level of customization. What's that? What was that? Which, which specific sniper reticles do you guys prefer? Ambush? <clears throat> ambush. Mm, I prefer case. Ambush. Yeah. Short case? I've, Actually, I've been tr- truthfully, I prefer the... I prefer the little the little dot center thing on the Taxus, but then I hate everything else about the Taxus. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Taxus was my jam in year one. Uh, ambush and short gaze has become the norm, just because like it's very difficult yeah. when you're playing on both systems, and the drop rates for weapons are so low. Yeah, you really have to just go with what the Vanguard gives you. Yeah. yeah. I like that one that's on the Omelon, Irene. I like the Omelon. It's like too, a. Yeah. It almost looks like it belongs on a, uh, on like a assault rifle. It's just like a yeah. hollow yeah. Yes, one. So the Falcon. Yes. The Falcon yes, I don't remember the name of it. Hey, it's, sorry, Falcon. The Falcon. it's almost like an ACOG scope. But in the, I kind of like in the, the, in the, in the you, What's that? I was to say I just I kind of like the Yapaki. It zooms in a little bit further, but but it's got a singular, you know, a smaller circle. 
I like that nice. one. The Aquila. There's that one too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brian at Hello Geeks PSN with the patch notes. Are you disappointed that Iron Banner legendary drops rate drop rates were not discussed? Will you play Iron Banner knowing this? I'm not mm. thinking about Iron Banner at all right now. No. <laughs> like, yeah, Iron Banner even is, on my yeah. radar. <laughs> I'll gone. talk to you at the end of the month when that that becomes a thing again. <laughs> I'm saving. I, I imagine. Good. Uh, sorry, I imagine this week they didn't want to talk about Iron Banner drop rates at all. They'll probably talk. They may talk about that closer. To when Iron Banner is supposed to be going on, I hope, more I hope they address it and I get more loot. This Absolutely, time. they need to. Right, Pope? Yeah, I'm feeling you. I don't want well, six okay. pairs so of we, pants. I want twelve. Check this out. Okay, Pope. <laughs> <laughs> Playing with check fire. This out. Pope. I think it was very telling. Having we've talked about that, how uh, it was not intended to play like six, ten hours and not see a single ghost drop. Mm-hmm. Right. He yeah. said. Like, oh, that's, that's not that's not supposed that's to unintentional. Happen. Right. Like that was not his design philosophy. So it does make me wonder if the whole loot table system in um, in their code is slightly bugged in some way, like some sort of hiccup happens. Possibly. And then the percentages get adjusted for, you know, there's a ghost in the machine. I know that's there's a ghost in the machine. I haven't gotten that ghost yet. I'd really like one. <laughs> me neither. Bootneck 98 at Thomas Parker 64. How much would you pay for a Rambo tailored throwing knife? Rainbow tailed throwing knife. Rambo tailored. No, Rambo tailed throwing knife. So you throw rainbow the tailed. throwing knife and like a rainbow goes through the air behind it. That's How much two would bucks you pay? Give me a number. I drop I drop two bucks on that. Two bucks? If it was ten bucks, I'd be like, ah. Mm. You might be ah at first, but eventually you'd break down. Nah. <laughs> I'd go four ninety nine. Although you're right. You're right. Four ninety nine. What if it went woohoo like Mario flying through the air? Ten bucks. <laughs> yeah. Ten bucks, absolutely. I'll, yeah, I'll ten mold. bucks. Ten bucks. <laughs> and if you hit a if you hit a, a headshot, it, it, it went hee hee confetti. Yeah. I want I want you guys hey. to uh, the children <laughs> get it. Hey, the children from Halo. <laughs> when you oh got god, a that was the best hey. part. Like grunt birthday party. <laughs> confetti oh, birthday yeah. party. Yeah. That, that would be so part. awesome. <laughs> uh, Diogo at Guizo. Is it worth it to buy the Taken King now? Uh, well, it's worth it more than any other time. I think you could get it for like 40 bucks, like the yeah. whole kit and caboodle. Yeah, uh, you're getting a deal. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, a lot right. of content for 40 you, bucks. You could get it for cheaper than that. You can get it for like, 30. sometimes it's on sale for like 20. Oh, really? really? Yeah. I saw it for 30. Seriously. But yeah. That's insane. That's that's a lot of content for a little price. Even if you play yeah. it for a couple of weeks and drop it, you're still getting your money out of it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Wait, you forgot about the twenty five dollar uh, or thirty dollar uh, class boost, though. <laughs> oh right, you're gonna it, have to uh, that in. it yeah. comes with it. Comes with it when you buy the game. No, no, your subclass. You got to boost that subclass. That's anyway, true. never mind. That, no, that's, that's true. That's true. That's true. You got to buy the fist pump emote. Oh yeah, out of hit emotes. Yep. Paul Pisagno at Pisagno Paul. Any tips for a soon to be dad soon to be dad judging destiny addiction? How do you do it? Hmm. Lots of back rubs. And making dinner <laughs> and being just nicer than you've ever been. <laughs> True. You gotta I- make your yeah, you gotta make your family a priority. Uh absolutely always. And and sometimes that means sacrificing raid night with the boys. But you you can do both, and you can invest in both. That's absolutely true. But uh, the the healthier your marriage is, and the healthier your relationships with your children are, the more uh, they are going to allow you to have hobbies like this. So first and foremost, you make sure they know every day that they're loved and valued, and they will reciprocate that in allowing you to have things like this. That's a great answer, True. I recommend... Uh, starting a YouTube channel, making it your job, bringing home a paycheck, and then say, I'm going to work. <laughs> <laughs> that's my. That's how I would do it, if I were to do it. <laughs> uh, I, I'm not a dad that I know of, but i uh, got to say, definitely teach them to instill a hatred for Thorn players. Yes. Mm. There it is. There you go. So I was in a, I was, a funny story. I was in the kitchen making dinner and i could hear my son playing um iron banner the other day um and he was it was he dropped the f-bomb didn't he he was he was talking <laughs> crap about like 
the other team and he was just spitting out stuff that I say. So big, big, if you're a new dad, make sure that you're, uh, you know, if your kid starts to play, make sure that you, the oh, little pitchers have big ears and, uh, Make sure that what you say online, you want to them, you want to model it. And good gaming, um, good good etiquette is always important. Model good behavior. Because yeah. uh, I, I I went I walked in from the to to give to to count, tell him dinner was ready, and uh, I saw him teabagging a guy he just killed. So yeah, uh, I was <laughs> just like, no. I should have told him that. Uh, people, people who teabag lose the, the the feeling of their thumbs as they get older. Santa hates tea. teabaggers. Santa yeah. hates. Santa <laughs> hates teabaggers. If you teabag, I mean, you're gonna, you're not gonna get a. You're, you're not, not gonna, gonna believe what's in your stocking. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Pradith at Tumo eighty six, Chicago or New York style pizza. Okay, first Blue of all, tree. Chicago style pizza isn't pizza. It's a pie with uh, literally the next pie. word after pizza is pie. Pizza pie. Yeah, that's wrong. Pizza, <laughs> not a pizza pie. Yeah, you can send all your hate to Patrick at Planet Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> I was on the fence, but now I'm going to go with Chicago style. <laughs> I I don't need, I don't see my option there, but I like thin crust um, thin crust pizzas. So is I'm that is, it, is is that a New York style? That's yeah. more it's more right. New York. New York is you get that you get the big you get the big it's fate it's like the size of your face it's big and flat and then you fold it in half and then you shove it down your throat. It's great. Uh, the Chicago deep dish pizza is like, oh man. You gotta eat it with a fork half the time. Yeah, you gotta yeah. like use a fork and knife. That ain't eating nothing. But it's, it's, it's like, like go... half soupy dough with cheese on top and it doesn't know if it wants to be you know a Oh, delicious. It, it, it is delicious. Uh, you can uh, you can send your hate mail to Patrick it. at <laughs> butter. The the crust crust tastes like it's almost fried in butter. Love it. Oh <laughs> my god, I love it's it. It's pretty I'm good. So hungry. Chicago so style pizza is um, is a commitment though. Like when you're going out to dinner, <laughs> it's a it's 45 minutes before that pie is ready. Yeah. yeah, and then, and then, then half of it's not even cooked. The dough's still all doughy on the and inside. And you're going to the wrong places, hey, Patrick. Bro. You're going to the wrong places. Old Chicago, because that's the only place that actually you can probably get a decent one. I don't know. I'm probably going to get some hate mail for that one, too. But, yeah. Demonolith999 at Jesse Lazenby. Do you think they should nerf or tone down the red sniping in PvP? Um, I think no. that the person who reses shouldn't get a res shield. <clears throat> so, no. So, so yeah, well, they, well, they, well, I, think I mean, they, I think this this affects it. This is yeah, this affects it. Is, it. Like, it's, a, it's two sides of the same conversation, right? Because like, yeah, like I don't think you shouldn't be able to res snipe. Like, you should definitely be able to res snipe, and it, it's it, within your control. If you died out in the open, you had control over the fact that you went out in the open, got shot, mm -hmm. and died. Yeah. And then your teammate has the option of you know rushing, trying to res you and push you out of the way or something like that. But I also think that when both of them get res shields, I think that's overpowered. I think it personally. is personally. And oh, I don't yeah. think you can, if you were to get rid of those shields, then maybe you could get rid of res sniping. But having those shields is the only equalizer you have against it, right? Is those yeah. shields are so powerful. Having two people with over shields all of a sudden rushing at you, thank yeah, God there's red sniping. Otherwise, you'd be fucked. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you, can actually actually, flip the, you can flip the tile right there. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. It, it rewards you for being the, the team that died. Yeah. I'm actually a proponent for no shields, in re not for the reviver or the revivee. I uh, you know, I think that the fact that you can pick them back up is an equalizer in a sense. You have the option to sort of uh, manage the engagement in a way that is, uh, you know, in your favor to get that revive. If you revive them in the open, that's on you. Yeah. But the fact is you can revive them, and then it's a 2v maybe 1. So that's enough of an advantage in and of itself. And yeah. when you take away those overshields, you promote more weapon diversity. Because right now, all you see is 1,000-yard stare. Why? People have to res snipe. You take away that overshield, people may be more inclined to use some different sniper rifles. I would love to see more snipers represented in the Crucible. Also, the uh, the type of or the the red shields <coughs> and the fact that special ammo isn't going to really be there on the first round for a while. Uh, if the team is able to you know 
kind of get someone to die in an advantageous place, you can then rush with primaries and overshields. That's a very powerful thing when you can't counteract it with any type of res sniping. Yeah, you're not going to have supers ready to go or anything. Yeah. So, so our, our chat wants to, you know, tell us that 75% of our chat thinks that New York style pizza is better than Chicago. Just And 75% of our chat is damn right. <laughs> chat. Just throwing that out there. DXG Aqua at DXG Aqua. How do you feel about the shade step cancel exploit or not? This has been around on Twitter a lot lately. People arguing this. What do you guys think about it? Shade step is if shade step is an exploit, then reload canceling no land beyond is an exploit. Then both are exploits. Literally, (laughs) right? Aren't they? I think they're levels and degrees. Honestly, I don't think that one size fits all when it comes to stuff like that. I have no exploit. Yeah, um, I think that pulling out a ghost to cancel an animation, um, I think it's, I think that this is getting over dramatized just because honestly, Clever. how many people do it and how many people do it well. But at the same time, I think that it is a glitch. Um, and the people who do do it really, really well basically just even further separate that skill gap between them and the unlucky sap that gets match made against them. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Lumi. <clears throat> yeah. Lumi. Yeah. All right, that's all I got for Twitter questions. That was it. That was the last one. I didn't nice. realize it was the last, last one until I looked at the thing again and said, oh, wait, that was the last one. Uh, gotcha. is, there, is, there, is there a way, Tefty, that we can uh, thank people for um, subscribing to the stream yep. be- before we get to the very, very end, maybe put it further up? Yeah, I got it right here. I got the list. Sweet. Let me know. Should I do it now? Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah, yeah. do it. Yeah, okay, since we this is live on Twitch, which is yep. awesome. We really appreciate um, all the audience support. Uh, to Nick's 26, six months to Planet Destiny. Six Fantastic. months. Nice. Yeah, that's six months. Awesome, right man. there. Thank you very much. Uh, Doughboy2448, two months to Planet Destiny. Nice. Awesome. Schwarzwalker, seven months to Planet Destiny. Schwarzwalker, like the Schwartz be with you? Yes. <laughs> nice. Schwartz. <laughs> Schwartz be with you. <laughs> seven months right there. Uh, Nitos, four with two months to Planet Destiny. Some hype right there. Infrared Arrow, three months to Planet Destiny. Uh, that guy said, an, ed- an arrow so deadly it's not visible to the, <laughs> the spectral <laughs> to the light. Eye. Infrared, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sitcom Saxophone, three months to Planet Destiny. Right there. And then Kwanzaa Tim, subscribe to Planet Destiny. It's a fresh sub right there. Fresh, fresh sub. Uh, welcome. Oh, sweet. Her fruit. Thank you guys so much. Welcome. Support's incredible. Well, I think we had a, I mean, I really enjoyed this podcast today. I, I really appreciate Leif coming on and Vanguard, you're, you're awesome, man. Um, Love I, you. I, I want to be able to go uh, and get a tutorial from you on how to, um, to do those snipes that you do. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, the, it just seems, it seems so easy, but I try it and I can't, I get just destroyed. Yeah, where can we go find tutorials on how yes. to properly where snipe? Where do we go? Is there a school oh, there is. Is there for a this? place that we go I to find I actually out? have a playlist called oh. Sniper School on, on my YouTube channel. What? And, and I, that, that's if you the, want... that, that was the proper segue, I know. That's yeah. why I said it. And if you wanted to take it even further and do the Sky Sniper setup, there's a playlist for that as well. Hmm. You got a montage on that. I, showed, I told you earlier, I showed the kids that, and everybody was yeah. like, whoa. Your yeah, montage, montage, really cool. your montage, montage is awesome. That, that montage was so well received. Uh, I was awesome. really floored by its by how well re- received it was. It was well over, uh, you know, it's it's approaching 150,000 views. It's, it hasn't been out two weeks. So for me, the size of my channel, that's crazy. So awesome, shout out to the community for receiving that. I, I like when you do <laughs> so videos. Well. You did a video today. I like when you do videos like this. Is you just played out an entire Crucible match and just explained your thought process as you went through the match, just mm-hmm. the decisions you were making. I love videos like that, and I thought that was a really good one. Oh, thanks. That's Appreciate cool. that. Yeah. We'll have links to his stuff in the description on YouTube if you want to check it out. I highly recommend it. Damn. <laughs> highly recommend it. Oh, we got a fresh sub, by the way. <laughs> fresh sub, Freakish Genie. Thank, Thank you for subscribing to Plan Destiny. Fresh sub, Genie. Freakish Genie. Let's go. Thank you, That's Freakish Genie. That's awesome. All right, so I guess we're going to end the podcast. Yes. I think so. Cool. All right, well, that was the 57th Planet Destiny podcast. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, this has been Patrick Casey. You know where to find me, planetdestiny.com, doing stuff. 
Destiny usually. <laughs> I'm Briar Rabbit. You can find me on Twitter at the Briar Rabbit or on YouTube on the Briar Rabbit channel or streamed right here on Planet Destiny's Twitch page. And I am Tefty Teft. You can talk to me at Teft on Twitter. You can catch the streams that I do for Planet Destiny on uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday evenings. And then also my personal channel, twitch.tv forward slash Tefty Teft. And this has been uh, Pope Bear. You can find me always throughout the week talking about Destiny on my Twitter page. It's at Pope Bear. And then I stream on the Planet Destiny channel. Yes, sir. Sorry, I, it sounded like I was going to say something else, but I yeah, didn't. Yeah, it sounded like you were going to say something else. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was going to, but then I just stopped, and then I oh, screwed yeah, it, it beats up. on the brain. Yeah. Well, okay, fine. Well, uh, yeah, I'm True Vanguard. You can find me on Twitter, the True Vanguard. You can find me on Twitch. Uh, we're partnered. We got emotes and all that fun business. That's uh, Twitch forward slash the True Vanguard. I also stream Monday nights for Planet Destiny, often with Holtzman himself. And uh, you can find me on YouTube. Just search True Vanguard. You'll find me. Awesome. Thank awesome. you. Thank you very much, True Vanguard. Thank you very much, Leif, for coming on and spending some time with us as well. And uh, that was the 57th Planet Destiny podcast. We will see you guys Yay. next week. Why? Yeah. All right. And, and now uh, we have to sit I'll around be, for Now we an sit awkward awkwardly. Moment. I'll be around. doing the, the Zer stream uh, in about an hour and a half or so. I got to get some dinner after this, so yeah. Anybody wonder, wonder when that's going to be coming and, up? Uh, uh, probably about sure. An hour, what are you doing half. right now? What am I doing right now? Yeah. I got a resol- I got a resolute raid in ten minutes. Oh, I it's see. Literally the only PVE I was going to say. Do. Maybe you fire up your stream and we can keep the stream alive and go jump into Crimson Doubles. But I would have yeah. actually loved to do that. Well, my yeah. plan was to stream tonight, but um, but this is the during the time that I typically stream on Thursday nights. Fair enough. All right. But we should sometime we should do soon. That. Yeah, we should do that. We should play. And so we should find. Um, so we uh, handing over people to another streamer. Ooh, streamer? Yeah. Who should we? Who should we go like raid right now? Who's out and about? Yeah, let's find somebody. Let's find somebody clever. I'll leave it to you guys this week because usually I pick. I think. Mm. Uh, the Manigator is on. Uh, Rabby's on. Both are good choices. Uh-huh. The Manigator is not yet partnered. I would suggest him, but this time I call. He's I, working on it. I agree. I, I, I'm yeah. cool with Mana. Yeah, yeah. let's do Manny. Let's do Manny. I love, I love right. the Manigator. He's awesome. All right, where is he? He's Manny. Ready. Go ahead and put his link in the... In the or here yeah, he's doing doubles with Hobie, too. So. Oh, yeah, he's with KJ uh, Hobie right now. Okay, do so it. that's going to be perfect. This yeah. should be I'm fun to watch. His stream. Do you see it? I just put it in chat. Okay, perfect. All right, so... We're going to host Manigator while uh, Tefty goes and feeds his face. Um, he will Bingo. be on later to do About the an hour, Zers- hour and a half. Thursday stream, so make sure you check back with us. But uh, go over there to the Manigator and say hi and you know give him some love from Planet Destiny, please. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, could you set the, sure you, could you set sure the host? I'm going to shut the stream off after you. Can I'll do someone it. do that? I'll do it real quick. Later, guys. Bye. Bye. Love you. Bye-bye. Bye. Love you a long time. Bye. Pretty sure I just did it. Yep. Yeah, now hosting, man. We're good. Yeah. Went through. All right, excellent.